Oh, in the words of Jackie Gleason, how sweet it is. It is MLB opening day. My baseball love and soul could not be happier. It is also our second annual Stream Against Suicide covering opening day coverage of Major League Baseball, Raw Ball Podcast. Ah, uh, this is this is our Super Bowl. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for joining us for the next four hours. Uh, Going to be covering the game tonight, talking about, uh, you know, baseball thoughts in the season. We already did our prediction prediction show on Tuesday, but we're going to get our guest thoughts on everything. And what a guest panel we've got. We have, as always, Maddie Laws, my cohort, co-host in crime and slime. We've got our long-established friend, one of, well, my long-established friend, a guy I've known for years now, urinating tree, Thank uh, you so much for joining us. It's uh, a pleasure, man. You, you, you and I, you've become such a, a good friend and a mentor to me in this whole business. I, you told me years ago when we first worked together, just keep grinding, just keep doing your thing, yep. and all's going to eventually pan out. Mm-hmm. And There's always ups and downs, brother. That's all you can do is keep pushing. You sound like a uh, Pirates fan already. <laughs> I mean, well, after the Pirates, they're tied right now. They're in extras. They've had a couple chances to pull this away, but no luck just yet. <laughs> Joining us also, the one, the only NFL fan of the year. He, You know him. You love him. You can't wait to hear him and see him. It is Tom motherfucking Grassi. Thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, we bow in your presence, sir. No need. I'm Tom. I appreciate you guys. Yeah, no, rock. let's rock, baby. Let's rock. And also, Stat Boy Mike Caldwell going to be helping us out on uh, color play by play as we uh, sort of look at the game tonight. It is the Cubs and the Rangers. We have another guest joining us: uh, Oklahoma sports writing Hall of Fame journalist Buck Ringold, a longtime Texas Ranger fan since the '70s. You know he's going to be doing his victory laps tonight. Got to give it to him. Uh, So, it is opening day. We got a little bit of a breather between now and football, although we have the draft. We have free agency. Tom Grossi never gets to take a breath, even when he has COVID. Especially when I have COVID. (laughs) Especially. Especially when I have COVID. Oh, yeah. I'm still trying to recover from it. There's still a couple things I'm still trying to break out with COVID. So, so I get it. I, I didn't know you had a tree. I had it uh, about a couple weeks ago. It just it, it got it at a restaurant, a supermarket, or I, I, I thought I got it at a party, but it, it, it was more of like I got the mild flu version, but it's like one of those ones that you notice, but it, it wasn't debilitating, I would say. It just like it, you had like, you know, like shivers, chills, a lot of aches and pains. It was, uh, it was fun. Let's just put it that way. Just like being a uh, Pens fan. <laughs> oh, oh, don't, 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 don't talk, don't talk. <laughs> well, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna take my three cups and I'm gonna cling to the abyss. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do have high hopes for the Steelers this year. Uh, as you can tell, the man in the middle, you got his quarterback. Uh, the Russ bus has pulled up in Pittsburgh. He has freed himself of the the clinches of Sean Payton. He is now free to ride all over Allegheny County. For now, yes. For, For now. now. For now. Oh, we'll see. Now, I mean, I, I think it's going to be like more of a short-term game. I think it's, it, it's a re-audition for him. I think too. Like he wants to prove he can still do it. He's getting paid by Denver. Might as well go to the place where he feels like he can do the best. How or get the best chance a- to start. How long before we see a local news promo of him behind the counter at Primanti Brothers making sandwiches? No, he's going to do a weeks. used car dealership or work for Attorney Edgar Snyder. He'll be doing a couple commercials there because a couple Steelers are already doing commercials. Mainly, uh, <laughs> teach, uh, Cam Hayward is the big one. Oh, boy. Well, we got about yeah. 25 minutes until the game begins. Uh, Stat Boy, what have you been doing? I haven't uh, heard from you since the Rumble. Uh, well... A lot has happened. Uh, I have uh, left my job at Dollywood. I am no longer bound by the chains of uh, secrecy and social mediaism. So I can finally say the word Dollywood on social media and podcasting. But uh, (laughs) other 
You are no longer employed by the uh, two finest fun bags in media. Well, no, she she only partnered with Hershey Family Entertainment. She does, however much she owns in there is none of my concern. <laughs> but uh, I'm I'm doing good. Uh, today was a great day out here in Sevier County. I. I, I turned it on. Sound like you were about to have a heart attack before we went live. The Yankees were giving you some. Oh, yeah. Uh, I started a, a FanDuel account, and I put some money on some games today, and the Yankees were one of my uh, picks to win. So thank goodness for that. And uh, I'm starting out small. I'm not I'm not going to be insane like the guy in the middle here who, who did not get a single. You didn't get a single parlay all season. You you bragged about that. He, he, he did not. I, I can confirm, Matty. No, I didn't. Matty, you're a wonderful human being, but you are a goddamn atrocious gambler, dude. You, 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 <laughs> you, you, uh. you got to start out to small, Matty. I mean, come because, on. Because, like. I feel like if I gamble, like if you I'm were betting on a two-legged man and a paraplegic in a sack race, you would take the paraplegic. That and is I would still Maddie's lose. love of underdogs. I would still lose. Hey, speaking of, I actually hit something for thirty dollars. And oh, our mascot, my puppy dog Maggie, uh, because I have a sandwich on my desk. Uh -oh. She Maggie's going for the food. Maggie, mm. no, no, no. Aww. You better not take Daddy's sandwich. Ugh. Good pop. When when you're the, when you're the father of a three year old one hundred pound American boxer, uh, <laughs> get Aww. off of daddy. No, <laughs> you been good boy, girl. Oh, come on. Oh. Okay, <laughs> get your fifteen minutes of fame, Maggie. Oh, look at you. Oh. Uh, she's Go just smelling the, the sandwich. Maggie, don't crush oh. daddy's groin during the show. <laughs> <laughs> Whew. Lord, she's a hefty one. <sighs> She's a, she's a good right. one. My mom's oh. dog uh, Harley out there does the same thing. She will she will demand attention every chance she gets. She's a great dog. Love her to death. Um, Maggie is pure attention whore. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, well, for those of you watching, uh, we alluded to it a little bit in the preview. Uh, tonight is our fundraiser for the hashtag nine eight eight Lifeline uh, suicide prevention. Uh, it is our big cause. It is our big show of the year. We have the link up there to donate. Please send us a snapshot, screenshot, whatever of your donations so we can keep an accurate tabulation going through the night. We're going to be live for four hours, 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. Uh, to raise as much money as we can for this wonderful cause. Not a dime of this goes to us. It all goes to this wonderful cause that's near and dear to all of our hearts uh ahead of time let me publicly thank all of our guests for joining us giving up your time for this you know this is yeah, you, you know uh, grassi and tree just got off a of clickbait so it's they've got to be tired their voice is uh, tired honestly dude i just had to rush grab dinner we're good to go man what is this dinner you <laughs> <laughs> My, my fiance just brought me a nice uh, Italian BMT from Subway that is literally right. I, I could throw a baseball through their front door. That's how hey, close uh, they are. Congratulations, brother. Uh, yeah, Cap is uh, Cap's uh, getting married this summer. So, uh, yeah, long, long, long time coming. Uh, they used to call me, you know, the Wanderer from Dion, but now I'm settling down to the point that I can't even remember what it's like to be a, you know, a wolf howling and prowling about the bars and locales of my locality. Uh, well, That's the most yeah, uh, beautiful way to explain being single. You're just like, it's been uh, <laughs> since I went out into the night. Ma Maddie can <laughs> confirm, when Maddie came to visit me here, literally the bar I used to go to, like literally my stool, they always kept it open. <laughs> yeah, and it was always by itself. Yeah, uh, I have I have retreated from the life of the the bars, the tenders, the bumbles, the uh, the what have yous, the where have yous, and what in yous. Uh, have you gone to the bar and like you know ordered a drink and just like left it on the stool and just like walked out and just like had the credits start rolling? I, <laughs> you know, Open that tab. would actually that that would be a good thing to put up on like the projector at the wedding. That would it be was nice. here, like, this is my stool. Uh, no, I actually, I, I have not been to a bar, 
like a, I mean, I've, I've been to like, we got some nice sports bars here that I go to once in a while, but like an actual just sit, drink, dive bar, I have not been to in over a year. Uh, I think Puppy's I have, trying to get out too. Puppy's like, if I'm not taking this sandwich, I, I gotta go. I'm gonna the go, Jeff Father Fox, John. The Jeff Foxworthy acronym for single does not make, does not hold water anymore. S I N G L E. Stay intoxicated nightly, get laid every day. I am proving it wrong, <laughs> sir. It does not. No, 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 no. I no. stay intoxicated nightly and I get laid every day. <laughs> I'm just doing it with the same person. Oh, well, that's fine. That's the difference. There you go. The I'm not having to go to the clinic for those monthly blood tests. He's gone <laughs> off the rails and we're only 11 minutes in. You gotta love it. Thank you, everybody, hey. for joining. Us. Penicillin is no longer my dance partner. <laughs> there you go. Look where I podcast from, the multiverse of media. We go off the rails every day, we do, every chance we get. Actually, we're doing good. We're 12 minutes in and already. Usually we're off the rails in about five, so we're, so, we're, we're, we're doing pretty good. Uh, Tree, Tom, yes, that boy. On a daily basis. Did you guys do a March Madness bracket at all? No. Every year I go, I'm going to do it. Nope. <laughs> but, uh, I Yeah. I just like I also like watched like the first like handful of games like I just like kept them on the background while I was doing work. I, I haven't turned on a game since. It's not because like I don't want to. It's just it's just they're just you know, not no interested. Well, uh, I, the games haven't really started since um, th it's since Sunday, so more or less I'm just yeah. They start them on uh, the background. Actually, I think the first one just started tonight. Yeah, it starts. Uh, I think 16. it started like four minutes ago, maybe. Lot to go well, on. Man, Baseball opening. We have MLB, NHL. This is the greatest time of, the, of year. You got NHL, MLB opening day, uh, March Madness, the Masters. You got the Triple Crown Wait, coming up. The Masters out. are going on. No, that's in a couple weeks. You yeah, got Wrestle, WrestleMania season, <clears throat> NBA playoffs. It's everything except football is going on. That's it. Yep. No, UFL is starting, Cat. Yeah, it's true. Battle battle starts on Saturday. Mm -hmm. um, Matty is all over some UFL right now. He is. Uh, he 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 is the new Papa Kaka of the Atlanta <laughs> Battle Hawks. St. Louis, there's St. Louis. Get it? Right. By, by, by the way, uh, Grassi, you gave me so many laughs this season with Papa Kaka. Papa. Uh, I I literally. <laughs> I, 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 cause I, I'm, I'm an early riser. I get up every day at like 6 sure. a.m., 5.45 a.m. And the first thing I would look for after you know, it would be, you know, what's Grassi's put on, what's tree done, you know? And I would literally sit there and I would watch that and I would laugh my ass off so hard. I would wake up the fiance. Cause I went, I, the North saga, dude, like I went <laughs> balls to the wall with that thing. I was like, you know what? Like if you go balls like, to the wall on everything. I do. But like this one, I was like, I'm going to make sure that this is so effing good that like I could be done with it and be like, yup, I'm like super proud of this. I can walk away from that. It now, was like the NFL that. meets Jerry Springer. In, in a way, great. with, with Papa it. Kaka and his his brood there. That's what's funny, now, too. I mean, like, because these past couple of years, you've had, like, I've got, that. that's the crazy stat. These past two years, I've gotten almost, like, 50% of my subscribers, which is nuts. Like, I've been doing this for nine years. And so a lot of people, they're like, oh, they're watching the North. They're like, are you going to do the East Saga next? And I was like, I did that in 2020, man. Like, this Already did that. One. That's it. It's done. It's over. So Now... You say it's over. Yeah. Are we going to get a saga with every team involved at the end? Or is that just going to be coach at the end? You got coach, baby. Yeah, we got coach okay. this summer. So coach this summer will be like the bow on all of it. And that doesn't mean like stuff won't happen or like there won't be like episodic stuff. I think it just gives me a lot more flexibility and freedom to do so. Okay, like, legit, I see, I see like, what I, you're talking about. I tried to tell like a six year story on a platform that is not great for like publishing like <laughs> narratives. Right, Good I was point. like, nope, I'm gonna do it anyway, and like it got super popular, and like coaches coach, but like it got super popular, and yeah, it, it's been it's been so cool because there's been people that have been here like since the beginning and have watched like every single piece of it and there's like good 10 to fifteen thousand people that are like obsessed with coach and it's just it makes me so happy so yeah it's dope. coach is awesome i, 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 I it's, love it's it. a love I, that has lost me more subscribers and more money <laughs> than it has ever gained but like i love it like i love doing it it's so, fashion project yeah. dude 
Now, speaking of cash and more content, Tree, are we getting more days of our Steelers knowing that Russ is in Pittsburgh? <sighs> we'll see how this goes. I mean, the problem <laughs> is everyone wants days of our Steelers, but the thing is, <clears throat> there's been no drama. That's the thing. No, not yet. Not yet. <sighs> Hopefully. The black and gold brigade. <laughs> no, watch. Watch. No. Russell Wilson is going to have a fantastic fucking season now that he's in Pittsburgh. And it's going to make know. me cry for 18 nope. fucking weeks. Nope. Enjoy that from Parnas content, man. He would, he'll would. he gain like 300,000 subscribers from that alone. <sighs> I just like, Misery going? brings viewership, baby. Uh, Misery does I mean, bring viewership. I know that. I mean no disrespect to the Pittsburgh Steelers fans in, the, in this world. It's a bad fit. I'm sorry. I'm it's sorry. A one year, it's a one-year thing. I, I think it's a great fit. It's a great fit. Mm-mm. They already have a great defense. They've got a good offensive line. They've got two really good running backs. Hey, Russ. Wolfie, you're chiming in. Wolfie, thank you. Uh, Russ, as we've seen, functions best. When did he get to the Super Bowl? He had the Legion of Boom. He had... Uh, he was also 10 years younger. He was also 10 <laughs> years younger. Like, I think he's a low-end starter right now. He can do I functioned job, better when I was 10 years younger. Out. I wasn't having to take what blue chew to true. keep up with people. Uh. Yeah, no, I, but, like, what Tree just said, like, that aspect, like, we've seen him play with the Broncos. Like, I get it. I don't know if it's going to be the best fit, but there's no, like, there's no risk attached to it because this season – the Steelers have already committed, like, hey, we're bringing in Russell Wilson. That doesn't work. We got Justin Fields. Like, It's, it's all on Denver's dime. It's all on Denver's Herna, dime. Yep. Herna and yeah. I both understand that the moon ball is still there. It yeah. is well and truly still there for us. Is he going to be able to? I mean, you know, he's just going to throw to George Pickens every five seconds. Well, fuck it. Pickens is down there somewhere. It'll it can be one of those things where it start, you know, it's, it can be like Big Ben's last year where they start at 11 and 0, and it's just Yenzer Nation. We're going to Super Bowl. And then something happens and other things happen. <laughs> I was actually, I was talking to Maddie the other, the other day, and I was like, so the fact that, okay, Wilson won, what was it, seven games last year in Denver? Uh, you yeah. know. What if the Steelers start out seven and zero, and then oh, it's just straight? Ah, you know, Sean Payton's washed. It was all you know. He was just holding Russ back. Tomlin's letting Russ cook. What? Can I just say? Can I just say Draft Kings? Ha- Draft Kings has Denver's over under for wins this season set at five and a half. It's a little I'll high, don't you think? I was about to say, that's a little generous, but I, I I can see us at least winning five. I don't know about six, so I wouldn't put money on it. I, I, I can go six. I'll give them six. That's all I'll give them, though. Not in my division. Seven and eight, you're pushing it. Nine and ten, no way. And that's just coming from me. A brand new sports better. <laughs> <laughs> well, as far as our respective baseball teams, uh, since this is opening day of Major League Baseball, have to ask our panel before we we got about 10 minutes left uh maddie you're a red Sox fan uh thoughts on your red Sox this year oh well hey ashton welcome to the chat saying hi to tom and tree oh man was recommended through youtube just ashton, now okay. thank you thank you thank you Wait, we're getting recommended that's not what true. They, i've seen like some random small creators get Flown in my feet too, so maybe that somebody right. knew their friend. Good job, YouTube. The Thank last you. time I get recommended for anything, I wound up in a straight jacket. So let's treat this with a little bit of, you know, <laughs> trepidation. Uh, Maddie, your Red Sox. Uh, oh, lordy, lordy. Um, lordy, lordy, Miss Claudie. <laughs> 162 games. Tonight. 162 games. The Sox would be lucky to get 85 wins. I think you you had them picked when we did our prediction show two nights They're ago. They're in the cellar. They're in the cellar. Yeah, I think we, 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 being really yeah, we, we both had the Red Sox finishing fifth or fourth. Uh, where, oh, actually, I've got it right here. Uh, you Maddie, you, yeah, we... Yeah, it, it's a wonderful thing. These other things on these shelves, they're called books. <laughs> I've heard of them. I don't know what that is. You, you know, you open them, 
read right to left, words put together a sentence. Well, Take Tylenol reading, for any headaches. If you're reading Might all for any you cramps. Read left to right. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Uh, Tree, uh, I haven't seen, I, I saw, I, by the way, Tree loved the, the season preview for MLB. I've watched it three times already. Uh, absolutely loved it. I thought you were dead on, um, uh, for most, most of the franchises. Um, your Pirates, okay. what, what, uh, what's your, your win loss? Or what, what are you thinking there? Um, I was higher on the Pirates. No, Maddie was higher on the Pirates than anybody. Maddie has the Pirates winning the National League Central. I've got them finishing fourth. I don't have them winning the Central. I think the Cubs find a way to win it. I'm not that big on the Cardinals. I think they made a lot of weird moves this past offseason. The Reds are the biggest wild card, I feel like. And the Brewers are still going to be there as well. But the thing with the Pirates, you're more or less just wondering, okay, like, are things going to piece together? You have a lot of interesting prospects in the farm system. Starting pitching is a huge question. You have Jared Jones, who's done really well in spring training. You also have Paul Skanes. Like, that's going to be your big move. I like a lot of Pittsburgh's young talent. I do. Mm -hmm. I mean, they they hope they develop. That's the key. Like, there were a lot of guys that were, like, question marks. That's the big question guys that could be, isn't it? Well, Skeens is going to be the uh, the midseason call up. I feel like you're thinking more along lines of like Henry Davis, Leo Peguero, Nick Gonzalez, Ronsi Contreras, stuff like that. Plus, uh, Andy Rodriguez is out for the year with surgery, so he's out. And I think uh, Johan Oviedo is also out for the year. Pittsburgh strikes me as sort of uh, low rent Baltimore in a way, <laughs> in yep. that I, I like a lot of the talent. It's not like high. Not end. as much as Baltimore's, but it, Pittsburgh is one of those weird teams where they tend to come into talent, but do they develop it and actually and actually mm-hmm. keep it versus just selling it off? Because apart from Artie Moreno, I think the Pirates have the worst ownership in baseball. I would go like John Fisher, Dick Monfort. I would say those would be. I, I mean, I would put say, Nutting I'm, in I'm bottom a Rockies 10. fan. Yeah, Dick Monfort is just – it's it, the yeah, Rockies we, are the Pirates of the mid-2000s. It's, it's bad. God, the Rockies are so bad. Uh, Tom, like, I, I've you, been through that same crap, and it's like, oh. Tom, are you a Brewers fan, or do you follow baseball all that Dude, much? yeah, baseball me, like, when I was a kid – um, cause I'm in New York. So like when I was a kid, I used to go to like old Yankee stadium and just to show you how far removed I am from baseball, I still haven't been to the new Yankee stadium and I still call it the new much. Yankee stadium and it's been there for a long time. So yeah, it was cause it was like cheap back then. So like you could go and like actually see back in mad day, you could actually go and like see a game. <laughs> You're younger like, than I am, Tom. Godly expensive. <laughs> so Like, I remember, like, I had some great times at, like, a ballpark. Like, I went, this was years and years ago, um, but I went out to Colorado, and I was checking out at a supermarket, and I, like, was buying, like, water or something, and they're like, do you want to, do you want baseball tickets? Like, the the cashier, and I was like, what? And they're like, yeah, we sell them here at this supermarket, and I was like, okay. She's like, yeah, it's $16, and you can get, like, two rows behind the first baseline. So apparently they deal. were very bad. So I did it, and it was pouring rain that night anyway. And it was so much fun. Like, Coors Field was, like, beautiful and stuff. But, yeah, baseball, it just – I, like, watched a few, like, uh, of the playoff games last year, but not really my thing anymore. Stat Boy, uh, I forgot – who is your – I know you bet on the Yankees earlier, but I'm wondering if that's just gambler's greed or uh, <laughs> Homer Love. Uh there is it no is, Nashville it is baseball team. It is, it is gambler's greed. I'm a proud Angels fan, true and true, ever since 2002. So oh, I'm going God. I'm going God bless you, my son. Strong. You I know. Oh. Hey, Mike Trout did what he was supposed to do. He hit a home run. Angels lose. That's like game. waking up every morning and sticking your dick in a bear trap. Ooh. Okay. Bear trap might be too kind. Yeah. <laughs> well, More no, like Lorena Bobbitt. Maybe <laughs> I'll I'll agree with what Matt said about cut. his team. I'll I'll go. I'm gonna be if if I can pull out 90 wins this season, it's a <laughs> that's lowballing it. Okay, I'll go. I'll give him 80. I don't see 90 anytime soon. 
Uh, Man Band 20 says Pittsburgh is the Middle Eastern Bazaar of Major League Baseball. Those I think the Athletics here past July outwin 31st. the Angels this year. Uh, if they make the move to Las Vegas, yes. They're, they're not moving to Vegas, I think, now. Tree, you did, you did a video on this. If I understand, they're having to... Stay in Oakland for at least another, what, two years? Another year. Their lease expires after this season. Okay, okay. Oh, so at least oh, another year bad. in in the in the uh, overflowing outhouse. Mm-hmm. We got a question for Tree here. Uh, thoughts on Steelers signing Dean Lowry? Thought it was a solid pickup for the Steelers. Dean Lowry? I didn't well, I realize can tell you all about some... Dean Lowry. <laughs> He's probably more of a duck <laughs> signing, I would Packer say. And then Minnesota Viking Dean Lowry. Oh, yeah. Yeah, what is with Packers and going to Minnesota, by the way? Bro, it's just it, they steal all. But it's the Bears. They do it, too. Like, they just take, yeah. like, all of the leftovers. And they're like, hey, maybe this will make us whole. Whatever it's the works. incestuous nature of <laughs> NFC North teams. It really is, yeah. 100%. It's like Michael Scott said at the end of The Office. You know, I feel like a parent who's you all know, watched all of his children grow up and marry each other. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're doing <laughs> Now, uh, back to the question for Tree. What do you think about Dean Lowry? Dean Lowry, I th- as I said, I think it's a death signing. I think he'll do a job in maybe more for emergency situations, but I don't think he's going to take on a full-time role for the Steelers. Now, I know I we don't have gonna... I know we don't have Scooter here, but Raymond also asked, what do you guys think about Dak playing his last year in Dallas and then possibly going to free agency? Raymond, I have told you this. Stop. Stop it, right? <laughs> I've dealt with this guy. Stop it. It's Unless it's going to be confirmed, stop. You, you have not heard anything official yet. Dak is happy in Dallas, bottom line. Right. Leave him alone. Well, he's just, it's more or less a money thing. You have to consider, like, would you pay Dak Prescott $60 million? That's the question. Yes. There yes. will be a team that will pay him $60 million. Yep. Like, if and it ain't the Cowboys, the there is going to be a team that's going to do it. Like, are you... <laughs> it's probably the, the, the Giants. New York Giants would be like, come on down, buddy. Like, we, we need somebody. But legitimately, you there's going to be a team that. that, like, I imagine he is eventually, good, like, going to stay. But, like, I, I do disagree with Scooter that there is a no, I think there is a world where he's not on the Cowboys next year. If he plays, like, poorly or they're, like, really bad which I don't think they will be, or they like fail again, like wild card round. Like, yeah, there, there could be some heads that roll. Definitely McCarthy's. Mm-hmm. Until oh, the yeah. big head rolls, that being Jerry, uh, Jerry Jones, nothing's really going to change there. Here's the thing. I don't think it's going to change either. Cause Steven Jones is a lot like Jerry. So I think they relatively like Jerry's kind of bled into Steven. Uh, a bit. I think there's still maybe sanity at the end of the rainbow. <laughs> you just gotta keep telling it to yourself. Well, I... <laughs> I, mean, I, I you know, honestly, if we want more laughter, especially after uh, January, dude, I'll enjoy it. I'd love it. Well, I'm a, I'm a Raider fan, so I have no hope. <laughs> Defense should be fun though, dude. The defense they, they were good. Like the defense got better. Like the offense was a disaster, but the defense and like adding Christian Wilkins, I, I think that's a really solid signing too. Uh, I'm excited to see what their pass rush is going to look like this year. Let, lest we forget, they signed the greatest bridge quarterback of all time in Gardner Minshew. Mm-hmm. That's a legendary you. meme, my man. We signed Legend. the stash. I, I like the the Christian Wilkins get, but. We are so far away from being relevant. We are irrelevant. You never know, man. I mean, you were close, but I mean, the problem is like bringing in McSnake Oil and trying to skin the Patriots alive failed <laughs> miserably. We were close in 20... You made the playoffs 14, in 2021? Yeah, it was 2021, and I think 2019 was the other good year. Derek Carr was like on fire, wasn't it? Yep, yep. and then he uh, broke his collarbone Shoulder. and it just ended him. Then McGloin went down, too. Raiders have a really bad history with quarterbacks, all the way dating back to uh, Jamarcus Russell and before. Oh, Jamarcus. Oh, God. I think I just threw up a little bit in my mouth. That's a name I haven't heard in a hot second. 
Jamarcus Russell. Oh, somebody sent him a blank tape and say it's film. There you go. Good one. Yep. Good one indeed. Who's playing tonight? Is it like a, so? Like, explain that to me. So, is because there's already teams that have played. Yeah. It's Cubs at Rangers. Got it. There are a couple playing right now. I know the Pirates are playing extras right now. Pirates and are up. No, yeah, six to five. Extra innings. Bait, well, man on third, one out. Josh Bell at the plate against Jose Hernandez. And the only other games left are the uh, Guardians and the Athletics and the Mariners and the Red Sox. And the Rockies and Down Diamondbacks. The third, he stays there. Two out. Oh, yeah. Two. Forgot about that one. We don't talk about my Rockies because we're absolutely dog shit. <laughs> oh, yeah. In, in this household. Really nice, apparently. In, in this household in Sevier County, Tennessee, you do not say the word Colorado, whether you're talking about the Rockies, the Nuggets, the Avalanche, or maybe the Broncos, even though it's Denver, but still, you what don't you, say what Colorado. You got, what you got against me, huh? huh? No, it's not. No, 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 no. It's not against you. It's Stat Girl. Stat Girl is a Minnesota girl, and Colorado and Minnesota oh, are fierce rivals, brother. I can, I can understand that. I can understand Every that. time the Avalanche play the Wild, run for the hills. And when the Rockies end up, and when the Rockies end up playing the Twins at some point during the season, Armageddon. It's not even that bad because the Twins are going to fucking dog walk them. Uh, Ashton has there, a though. question. Ashton has a question for Tom. How do you feel about the Packers? Uh, what the Packers have done in free agency, and who do you want in the draft? And why is it a tight end or a kicker? Definitely not a tight end um, because we have, <laughs> because we have Kraft and Musgrave and that was that was actually cool. So we got Musgrave. Musgrave made me money last Kraft year. Kraft was going to be kind of like a blocking tight end or something, but because Josiah Deguara, who we Deguara, excuse me, who we drafted in 2020 with Jordan Love and AJ Dillon and everything like that, that did not work out, and that was a bad pick then. Bad pick now. He's with the Jaguars. So, but the fact that Musgrave got hurt, but before that he was playing really well, and then Tucker Craft came in and also played well, like we're kind of set at tight end. I wouldn't be surprised if they like maybe do a day three pick. Um, kicker, we just brought in Greg Joseph from the Vikings, who doesn't give me a ton of reassurance, but at least it's a veteran who can compete with uh, Carlson because Carlson obviously struggled during his rookie year. So uh, I'm really excited to see just if Carlson's going to get better or they're just going to try and go get somebody else after the draft. But yeah, what they need to... Free agency has been good. Um, Aaron Jones leaving just hurts the soul a little bit. You get it, but it still hurts. If Josh Jacobs can kind of get back to the magic that he was like the previous season, not last year, obviously, then they're rocking. Um, and it's kind of just an upfront deal anyway. So I'm, I'm happy with that. But Xavier McKinney, like that signing is such a splash signing that usually the Packers usually don't do. And to go and like immediately upgrade your most drastic position of need is phenomenal. So I'm really excited. McKinney's a really good player. Um, and then for the draft, they need to draft a middle linebacker. Devondre Campbell walked. He's with the 49ers now. Quay Walker, I love him. He's great. McDuffie's good. Um, but we need another linebacker, especially going to 4-3. But need depth there. Need another starter there. And, uh, yeah, I imagine they're going there. Probably still going to address safety in the draft. And then most likely corner at some point, too, depending on what's going on with Eric Stokes. Did you die a little bit when Aaron Jones took off for, shall we say, greener pastures? Yeah, I was was sad when he left. I mean, because he is just, he's a guy that you want on your team to just, (laughs) like, he represents the the fans, the team, the city so, so well. Um, And, like, he took pay cuts to stay there. And, like, I get it. You know, he's, like, an aging running back. And, but... You know, there's locker room guys, and like even just the, I think it was Dontavian Wicks who dropped a ball last season, and he like had oh yes down. it was yeah going by the sideline, and Aaron Jones like picks his head up and stuff, and like that's what you need, like especially for the newer guys. So yeah, it sucks, and then just to sign with the Vikings, man, like come on, man, like, why? It, it, that, that has to hurt. Uh, just to NASCAR way. fan, you can have him for some some draft capital. I'm we, we don't we're not gonna have a quarterback to throw to him, so I would be more than fine trading him away for. Uh, um, an Uno, maybe a dose and a trace. I mean, Grassi, would you want Devonte Adams back in Green Bay with? First Jordan of all, it's Devonte with an A. Damn it! Sorry. Uh, it, it, <laughs> Devonte Adams. You are name. still butt hurt. Get I over have it. Seen Devonte Adams' name spelled a million different ways. Anyway, um, that would have been cool, but like, we're not gonna give you that. Like, we're not gonna. Be oh. like, all right, we'll take him back and give you what you guys gave us. So. 
Um, it'd be cool, and I think like last year would have been really cool, especially with the uncertainty, but this is a really young wide receiver room, and like I'm really excited about it. So while I would love Devontae Adams, and I still love Devontae Adams, I don't think... Imagine him Devontae and Adams. Jordan Love just... You know, afternoon I, delight all Sunday you're afternoon. Good. You're good. You're good. No, it's. it's <laughs> I have seen Devontae Adams spelled so like D E U, like V U N T E, because it was when he got traded. Oh, Devon. Like, How do you feel about Devontae? And I'm like, no, that's not a person. So, that's the teacher in me coming back out. I mean, that's honestly, it. when Martavis Bryant was around here, do you know how many people said oh, yeah. Martavius Bryant back yep. in the Bro, day? Bro, I. I'm, I'm going to say, I'm one of them. I was one of the ones that thought Smoke it was Martavius. weed every day. <laughs> Rule number but, one, uh, get the players' names right. I'm guilty and, of it many times. And I saw his uh, response over to my right. Uh, Bucko's one. How do you feel about that? Yep, uh, I just treat? saw that. Uh, I mean, I, I thought happy. they were going to screw it. I mean, they had some big situations. They just couldn't convert with eight 161 runs. 161 more to go, Tree. 161 you know, more to go. Undefeated season still intact. Let's fucking get it. <laughs> <laughs> I love your. I actually watched your two old, uh, well, actually three year old pirate videos where you were breaking down. There were like three tiers of pirate fans there were the mm -hmm. Yenzers, yep, the, the analytics the nerds, analytics. and then. And everyone who says nine's cheap. Yeah. Uh, that whatever that video was you found of the yinzer gentleman with the beard and, and the look in the eye like oh yeah like uh the guy just with the pirate that like, was came out of, like, that was like a while ago I, oh i know um uh, but i was just like that is picture perfect yinzer at any event that does not go his way mm-hmm I mean, dude, there there are a couple of them, like even like Yankees fans, the famous ones, the the random dude just sitting there doing this, just staring at the camera, like yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it's such a meme. Um, by the way, uh, Tree, you have no idea. You made one of my coworkers day the other day by just responding to his question about being a yinzer. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. Said, Maddie's got a new I mean, coworker who's honestly, a Pittsburgh fan. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he mentioned that. And I'm like, dude, run. Run. <laughs> you still can. Yeah, so my coworker was like, Can you ask, you know, your Yinzer fan? So that's you, Tree, and that's uh my friend Greg Cherry. And when you responded with run as far as you can, he just cackled and was like, But what if I refuse? <laughs> Man, so he has uh, currently bought two uh terrible towels. <laughs> well, well that'll towels. pay for well, Russell they go Wilson to a good this organization. Year. Like this, yeah, <laughs> these funds go to charity. So that's oh, hell a, yeah. All the towel money goes yep. to charity? I did not yep. know that. Myron Cole he, had a son that, with autism, and it goes yep. to the Allegheny Foundation, I believe. I did and not he, know he that. He is buying them directly from the Pittsburgh Steelers, you know, merch website, PittsburghSteelersNFLShop.com. So. I always tell people that because <clears throat> if you – so, for example, I've lost a fair amount of clickbait punishments, a fair amount. And uh, anytime I buy like Vikings memorabilia or anything like that, <laughs> if you want to support your team, you go through their website and do it through like the pro shop because they get a, yeah. a good chunk of those funds. However, if you buy anything off NFL.com, it gets split amongst the other 32 teams. So technically, when I had to buy Vikings jerseys, I was also helping the Packers. Technically. So <laughs> when you, I bought you the NFL, NFL shop jersey on there, I'll the... help yours too. Yeah. So when Even you when you're being you punished, you're going to help the Lambeau Chaotic lovers. good, baby. Let's go. Chaotic, Chaotic good. <laughs> All right. It and is top of the for. first zero out. Ian Happ is up to bat. We are here for chaotic good. Uh, I like this Cubs team. Stream against suicide. Uh, I like this Cub team. They're scra they're scrappy do man. Well, this is the fir first game of the season. We have no idea what these teams are going to be. Well, I mean, I was saying, look in. at them last year. I mean, I thought they overachieved last year. It is the defending World Series champion Texas Rangers. I just, I, I am still astonished the Rangers won a World Series. Same here. Who wins? The, who wins the series? Trevor says. Red Sox or Mariners? My hope is Red I, Sox. I got the Mariners win that Mariners. division. I think this is the year the the Mariners finally stop kicking their fans in the dick. And well, he wasn't asking the 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 division. He was asking for the series. 
Take I would say Mariner because of the pitching. I like this Mariner this team. Red Sox. My money says Mariners. They're sort of like Jim Leahy. They're just sober enough to know what they're doing and just drunk enough to enjoy it. <laughs> Stat boy knows what I'm talking about. I understood it completely. <laughs> one pitch and one out. Hap is sat down. <laughs> Great so way much to for start that. the season. <laughs> <laughs> so much for that scrappy. I've got you guys in one ear. I've got the game feed in the other. <laughs> uh, Ashton doing, says, I got Rangers winning because of Wyatt Langford, former U.S. player. I have Langford on my Langford fantasy team. I have high hopes for this young man. He is a beast. Like, you have a full year of Aaron Carter, or Evan Carter. I'm thinking Aaron Carter, the old, the, the late singer. <laughs> the old kid singer. Evan Carter, Wyatt Langford. I mean, you're going to have DeGrom back for a little bit. Maybe he'll stay healthy. You have Scherzer coming back as well. Probably bring in another starter at the deadline. So, I mean, you still have Jack Leiter and Kumar Rocker in that system. Jack Leiter is probably a lot closer, but still, I mean, your best is yet to come. The best is yet to come, and babe, won't it be fine? Say a Suzuki up to bat. <laughs> come on, say it. Get me a hit. Nate Eovaldi is the starting pitcher tonight for the Rangers. Valdi should be uh, pretty good for them this year, too. 285 batting average, 20 home runs, 74 RBIs last season. Come on, Suzuki. So here is a question for all of our baseball people here. Is there any team, not the Dodgers, Mets, Braves, Astros, Yankees, Padres, that would sign Trevor Bauer? <laughs> and I'm going to be honest. Says, he, says collusion? The, he says and end the collusion. No collusion, I'm, but. Collusion? I mean, I would go with the Pirates because let's be real. The Pirates had signed a role this Chapman and Domingo Herman. They have no moral high ground. Yeah, I, I signed, get the best I guy signed to roll this chat on my fantasy team, and I need to drop him ASAP. But is he groping grandmas? <laughs> <laughs> is he well, you, you, you know what you know what they say. You know, the older the violin, the sweeter the music. I think that's his mom. <laughs> that's never heard that one. Which is even weirder. Ah, oh, come on! Haven't you ever read Lonesome Dove? NASCAR fan says Raymond Baltimore. <laughs> Uh, so thank no you all for Angels joining us. Beating Baltimore in this series. We got 28 people watching right now. Please donate 988lifeline.org slash donate. It is for a wonderful cause. Oh, we are only a hundred dollars of our goal of five. I donated thousand. 250. I can try and I oh. think I have the tab still open. Hey, Tell you what, no I can worries, actually. No I actually need to donate myself, so I'll yeah. do that. Let me update hmm. that 250. You said Tom. Thank yeah, you yeah, yeah. so much. You have, dude. This means so much to us. <laughs> just, just you guys being here means a lot to us. Appreciate oh, man, you thank us. you for having us. I mean, dude, I've, I've been a, fa I've been a collaborator on the show for shit since 2020, 2021. Well, no, actually, uh, well, that was Wrestle Vault when it was just me and John uh, yeah, working together I mean. out of his. You've been uh, with us since Tennessee day one, lab. damn near. Yeah, you, you've been with us since day one. Uh, yeah. Well, John, he actually, uh, he gave up podcasting to go to law school. Oh. So, uh... He's also shit. the bane of our fantasy league, but we won't get into that. Oh, God. Our fantasy football league, he hates us, we hate him. Hey, <laughs> Ad, Ashton, it's perfectly fine if you don't donate. Just get the word out. 988 is a fantastic cause. As long as you get the word out, it means as much to us as donating. Any kind of awareness, hey, that's all we're asking for. Dollars is dollars. Awareness is more. Looks like Bellinger. Ashton says oh, is he's out of the grassy posse since the 2020 draft. Let's go, Ashton. Come on now, baby. Tom, what Good happened in the 2020 draft again? Good, I can tell you. Oh, actually, ah. no, we drafted Jordan Love. is great. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely turned out great in the long run. It did. It worked out. Your initial reaction, though, was... Uh... <laughs> yeah, I mean, I didn't want a quarterback. Like, well, Rodgers just... just won MVP, did he not? Yeah, it was, he won MVP. Uh, well, no. 2019, he didn't win MVP. They just went to the NFC Championship game. Ah. They got run over by the 49ers. So I was like, hey, can we draft a line? That happens like every Patrick year. Patrick Queen or something? <laughs> you know, now with the Steelers. But like, we draft somebody to stop, uh, you know, the run game and then... Or like a wide receiver, yeah. Because the famous saying is like, "Give me Mims or give me Queen," 
and then we got Jordan Love, and I was like, come on, man. Like, it's nothing against Jordan. And, that, like, the whole rest of the night, after the screaming, I was like, yeah, like, you know, he could be good. He needs time to develop because that last year he threw a whole bunch of interceptions, but he wasn't on a great team, and blah, blah, blah. And then that aged very well, but the initial reaction was... Uh, the second half of last season, Jordan Love looked really damn good. Uh, hey, NASCAR fan also says he's with Ashton on that. Let's Been go, NASCAR. Uh, part of the posse since 2020. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Jordan Love made maybe the best, like, mid-season to get his around. shit together for a quarterback. I, I mean, I was amazed. I mean, I, I, I by the end of the season, I, I enjoyed watching him. He's fun. Like, it was, once he started, like, to stop doing, like, the turnovers and stuff and some of the decisions. Yeah, I mean, once a quarterback stops receivers. throwing interceptions, you know, things yeah. do. <laughs> there was receivers not catching the ball, too. Like, even against the Raiders, like, that last, like, just bomb to Christian Watson in the end zone, Watson made, like, no attempt to go after the ball. And it's like, okay. come on, man. Well, like, you got to at least try. <laughs> you gotta, well, that's, you that's, that's one thing that I feel uh, LaFleur tried to do too much with love. It felt like he was trying to make Aaron Rodgers out of him when it came to like the two minute warning, the you know, like those late minute calls because he was throwing it so far downfield on yeah. a lot of those late game plays, and it's he doesn't have the arm too, to right? do that though. Yeah, it's it's decision making, and like they kind of calm down with that, and yeah, he definitely found a rhythm. Like I say, the Panthers game because like the Lions game on Thanksgiving was like, oh damn, like. Mm -hmm. Who's this team? Like, is this team like came out and was like, okay, because we thought we were gonna get our ass kicked, and then we kicked their ass, which was great. And then uh, that Panthers game, even though the defense was god awful, Love was like consistent. He was perfect. Even that Buccaneers game, you know, it was all about Maker Mayfield, who had the perfect passer rating in Lambo. But like, Love was also really good, and it was just that consistency that really like built upon. And then Dallas was like his magnum. Yeah, opus. when 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 you guys beat the ever loving shit out of Dallas, which by the way, Aaron Jones was a big part of that, but yeah. I digress. I uh, told that to Micah Parsons face. He was because Micah Parsons like, how'd you beat us? He's like, you have a DB playing as a linebacker. We're gonna run the ball. He's like, yeah, you have a defensive back coming in and playing linebacker. Yeah, we're going to feed the ball to our running backs and they're going to run them over. And they did. Now, uh, Tree, I do have a question. Come middle point of the season, who do you see being your quarterback? Is it going to be Fields or do you think it will be Wilson? I don't know. I feel like it would depend on how Wilson does or if he's injured. That's going to be your question moving forward. Because, like, I feel like Fields will still have some value in the system. He'll use him on running play, certain throws. Yeah. Like, he won't just be a bench guy. I think he'll be have some role if, like, Arthur Smith at least has some common sense. But I feel like the majority of the snaps will go to Wilson unless he gets injured. Simeon is out. Seager is up to bat. A lot of people thought Seager was going to miss the start of the season, but they're rolling with him. I just need yeah. Corey Seager to get two bases. I don't give a shit how he gets them. I just need him to get two bases. Well, he's also on my fantasy team, so I'd like if he hit a couple of grand slams. But, you know, that's just me. Good luck with that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> You're a bit ahead of me there, Captain, so that's that's why I'm uh, keeping quiet a little bit. I, I am uh, I am currently using the st uh, game cast through ESPN as that's – well, I've got the game cast, and then I've got the game in one ear. I've got the game on ESPN right now. I'm, I'm kind of looking at game cast for stats and things, but other than that, everything I call, I'm, I'm seeing live. So, Tree, I, I, a question for you, Tree. I've been asking you to do this for years. When are you just gonna make the video that puts the death nail in the coffin of my white socks? We need it just so we can emerge from purgatory. I don't know, man. Everyone keeps saying that, but I mean, like, they got, get us we out. We are yeah. shit. <laughs> oh, they are pretty bad. I almost did a full video last year on that whole rant and just, like, just doing that because I feel like it did it better justice than I would have. Well, you also had the knockout that happened last year, so that was also there. Down goes Anderson. Down, Down goes, goes Anderson. Anderson. We that was are incredible. so bad. Uh, we lost to the Tigers today one to nothing. Well, I mean, yeah. I'm surprised Garrett Crochet had a decent start. I'm surprised Garrett Crochet didn't piss himself on the mound. I'm, I'm surprised, I'm surprised there was not there was not a skid mark on the back of that uniform. All 
right. Well, I donated two fifty to uh, nine and eight. So guys, you're good to go. Nice. You hit your call. Thank, Thank you, you Tree. So I just sent a receipt to you, Maddie. So you're good to go. I appreciate it so much. Thank you, guys. You have Excellent. no idea how much that means to us. Dude, it's the least I can do for you guys. At least we can do for you, to be honest. The Orioles up eleven to three today. Twins won four to one. Yeah, hey, we don't talk past. about Baltimore today. Let's 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 erase that one, okay? <laughs> they won eleven to three over your Angies. Uh, hey, at least Trout again. At least well. Trout did what he was supposed to do. He got the other uh, starting home run, and they went downhill from there. Hey, hold on. Speaking of basketball. Yes. Tom. Yes. What in the hell is going on with the Bucks? We think you guys are sucking, and then you guys start doing good, and then when we think you guys are doing good, you guys start sucking. It's so amazing because, like, during the football season, like, they're in the background for me, right? Because I'm like, oh, like, okay, they won, they lost. Whatever. And like, Miss like, Laura. Like, it's dope. And I feel like whenever I tune in, I'm like, oh, like, because everyone's like, Tom, they're really good. I was like, All right, I'm going to watch. And then they suck. And then I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to watch. So, dude, I don't know. I just want to go to a Bucks game again. Like, I miss going to Bucks games. Like, they were super duper fun. I hope, like, you know, they have a playoff run, so at least I can go to one. But I am so out of the loop at this point. Like, I saw the Lakers like double OT and stuff like that, and I was like, oh man. So yeah, let, let me let me let me give you a mini rant on that. I saw one. Stat girl yelled out. She's like, oh my god, Bucks and Lakers in double overtime. I never, I never turned off the Xbox that fast to watch it. Yep. The first three and a half minutes, yep. everybody's trying to win the game in double overtime. I'm like, well, you guys stop being greedy, play smart. <laughs> and then Reeves, the luckiest guy on the court, finally hits the three to give the Lakers the lead. And I'm sitting here like, you know, where the heck is uh, – is there any hope for the Kraken? No, they're probably going to get eliminated. Sorry, uh, Pacific Division for life, but it, it's not their season. We'll get to that in a second. Giannis, <laughs> Giannis is trying his hardest. Honest to God. I, I You're like Jackie I, Gleason and smoking the bandit. Shut up one shit at a time. Exactly <laughs> right. When I, when I notice it, I stop. I'm really, I've got to be like for a reason. Giannis is my boy. That he's, that I, I've switched from Lakers to Bucks. Two years strong. Young gets walked. So we have one on base, one out. Adolis Garcia up to the plate. Guys, I Come do got to I didn't realize it was already past 745. I do got to skedaddle. I really appreciate the help. Tom, you thank, you so thank you so much. Thank you so much. For thank you for joining so us, Tom. Good to see you again, Mr. Grossi. And send us some followers, especially me. Take care, Tom. <laughs> we love you. Thanks, guys. Take care, man. Oh, ladies yeah. and gentlemen, the one, the only, you know him, you love him, NFL fan of the year, Tom Grassi. God, follow I love him. That dude. Follow him at Tom Grassi Comedy on Twitter. Oh, yeah. He says thank you all via his YouTube. Thank you, Tom, for coming on. Thank you for donating. And then there were four. The original Papa Kaka. <laughs> <laughs> we got Ashton, Man Band, saying goodbye, Tom. It was fantastic having him on. Uh, hope he does. Hope he is doing well, and the Packers. Hopefully, they have a better season than they did last time. I, I was. I meant to get to this. Uh, Robert Fernandez, you put this comment up. I was actually listening to a podcast before I jumped in here about the Jets this year. Do the Jets even make the play? The, the Vegas, I think the Vegas or DraftKings line on them is nine and a half. I don't know if I want the over or the under there because I just, I, I don't know if I trust the Jets in this line. I, mean, I know they've made some acquisitions. Aaron Rodgers is a year older. He's coming off Achilles surgery. We know he rubs it with, you know, crystals and, you know, uh, herbs and you know elephant urine and all kind of obscure things but okay throw all that garbage out the window okay <laughs> focus on that he's back and hopefully he lasts longer than four plays in one game focus on that don't worry about all the freaky stuff give him a give him i'll give him eight wins this season and that's being generous i'll, I'll if they make nine if they make ten then you can worry about the playoffs I had high hopes for him last season. Unfortunately, everything went south game one. So Adolis grounds out to third into the inning. 
I also I gotta go have... to the bathroom, boys. I'll be right back. Go ahead, Tree. Go ahead, Tree. I also have the Jets going eight wins. I don't have them going nine wins this season. Look, look at their division. They have to play six games within their division. Two against Buffalo. Two, two against, against Miami. Buffalo. Two against New England. Okay, so there's two wins. <laughs> I was about to say, unless unless Drake May is exactly what the doctor ordered for New England, unless they don't get Drake May, which would be insane. But doctor, doctor, give me the news. I got a bad case of losing to you. <laughs> yeah, no. So un- unless New England gets their shit together, turns it around with Gerard Mayo as head coach. I don't see much of that happening. Oh, don't worry. I keep my expectations low, Robert says. <laughs> For anyone who's never heard the phrase, a, a, re, a, a bitch slap from reality, I think that's what the Patriots are going to be due for the next few years. They cannot compete in a post-Belichick world. I'm sorry. It's not going to happen. I bash him Not for a while. Not for a while. Watch, you know, watch. Gerard Mayo is going to be exactly what turns him around post Brady. Matty, you are I'm the gonna... most degenerate underdog gambling S O. I love underdogs. You know this. I you love can't... the cartoon underdog. That doesn't mean I'm going to bet on him or dress like him. You can't <laughs> bet them all the time. The payout is I'm amazing. Not them yes, all the time. but the reality. I sure should have Maddie, not, hold on, Matty. You got it. You got to face the reality on this. Okay, underdogs. Don't win all the time. That's why they are underdogs. Believe me, I yeah. gave the Angels. I gave the Angels the first game of the season. Come tomorrow, I might switch over. I'm going to give them maybe a, a couple series before I give up on them. I'll still root for them, but I'm not going to bet on them. I'm going to bet against them. You I'm interested to see how stat, I'm, I'm interested to see how Stat Boys gambling line looks come the end of the baseball season. Hey, right now I'm, I'm four out of six. I'm happy. That's not bad. No, wait, five out of seven. Excuse me, I'm five out of seven. Now, now, now how are you doing? Are you doing straights? Are you doing individual straights? Are you I'm, putting right now? I'm just, doing straight, I'm just doing straight money lines. That's all I'm doing for now. As the season progresses, I might do a couple prop bets. I might do a couple parlays, but I'm keeping it small. I got hey, hey. You gotta crawl before you walk. Are you sure? Stat boy. Print. Stat boy is doing it smart. He's doing them as individual straight bets, which is very smart. My brother that is Renegade. betting responsibly. My brother Renegade, he's like, Mike, if you do not slow down and get off the table right now, I'm going to slap you. Believe me, back of my head did not feel any better. I probably have a mole back there from 20 years of slaps back then. <laughs> the only and time I ever gamble, apart from just my, my two fantasy leagues I do every year, I, I will play poker, like, with friends. Just, right, you know. Right. Uh, I just, I, I, it's like, you know, Doc Holliday. You know, only a, a fool bucks bucks the tiger. The house always wins. Right. Uh, I, I just, I have no faith in casino. I've been to a casino one time in my life. I walked in with $20, made $40, and within an hour, I had no dollars. There you so go. that happens. That's why I don't. I just it happens to the best of us. Uh, Raymond, out of the teams playing today, March Madness tournament, who wins today? So the game's going on today because I have money on all of them. Wow. San Diego State and <laughs> Christ. San Diego State and UConn is going right now. Go UConn. I'm yep. going UConn, which UConn is up twenty-seven nineteen. There you go. Uh, Illinois State. Uh, or Illinois versus Wait, but Iowa San Diego State. State's the underdog. Aren't you supposed to always bet the underdog, Maddie? UConn's going to the fucking it's final It's the court. Huskies. You They're the number happens. one team. You're insane uh, if you bet San Diego State. I, I almost bet San Diego State. Be quiet. Maddie. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, Illinois versus Iowa State. That game is yet to be played. And Illinois wins. I have Iowa State. Iowa State is the favorite there. Go on. I... Iowa State is on a streak. Uh, Cap, who do you have? Illinois, Iowa State. Iowa State. So that's two to three because Stat Boy went Illinois. Uh, the next game is Bama, North Carolina. The Tar Heels have surprised me all tournament. I'm going Tar Heels. Good call. North Carolina looked pretty damn dominant uh, Sunday. I, I was I, – I, 
I was really impressed. I, I, I undervalued them. I have to. Admit. So you're going North Carolina Tar Heels? No, I. I'm not going them. I'm just saying they impressed me. I can never cheer for North Carolina because I fucking hate North Carolina. Fuck North Carolina. So you're Carolina. going Bama? Oh God, no! I'm not. Can, can both teams just catch gonorrhea and pass out <laughs> on the yeah, court? Like both lose. Just start. Or, or like syphilis, just start pissing pus out their cocks oh on the court. Oh, my God, dude. I'm in Tennessee. Do you really think I'm going to pick Bama? Hell no. In football, maybe, but not in basketball. Wait, 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 wait. Tennessee and Alabama have had the third Saturday in October rivalry for a century now. No self-respecting Tennessean can ever pick Bama in anything. Otherwise, you can take that cigar and shove it straight up your rectal cavity. I just live here in Tennessee. Oh, so much displacement. All right, so you got you got North Carolina over and over, the over the Bama. last the last game there. Buck sent tonight. me a message. He said he's running late. He'll he was covering a game. He'll be here in a little bit. Hey, that's cool. perfectly fine. Uh, the final game of the night is Clemson Zona, and I have Clemson and oh, Clemson I got Zona at uh, the half by eight. Clemson Ooh. fucked my bracket. They fucked over Baylor. That was a Final Four team of That's mine. I, I hope, I hope Zona absolutely demolishes them. I'm mad at Zona because they took out my Long Beach State. <laughs> it was a two versus oh. 15 matchup. Oh, for crying out loud. Like you actually had hope. I did. It's my home city. Of course I'm going to pick Go Beach. I had no choice. I had to pick them by default. Now, Tree. It, for those games. In the words of Red from Shawshank Redemption, hope is a dangerous thing, my friend. <laughs> now, now, Tree, Tree, for those games, if you heard, who would you pick for your for your bracket if you had it going still? Oh, I mean, I still have a bracket. I mean, I would go probably. I'll, let me look up this bracket real quick. It doesn't have so my we, headphones on. Sure. I, as no, sad as it may be to look at it. <laughs> uh, tree, Tree, I got you. You don't have to look it up. Today... We've got UConn, San Diego State. I would go UConn. UConn, UConn is currently up by eight. Yeah. We've got seven and a half minutes left. It's 21-29. Yeah. Iowa I mean, State, Illinois. Ooh, that's tough. It's a dog fight in that game. I, or, I mean, it's going to be a last-second buzzer. It is, we, it go is, Iowa State. Cubs have scored uh, Dansby Swanson, Sacrifice, and Morell scored. Okay, so there's one nothing Cubbies. I'm up. But uh, I tree, mean, what I, you I had North. I mean, I would say probably Iowa State in like a buzzer beater. Next game, Bama, North Carolina. The next game is currently going after this one. So I have North Carolina winning the championship. So I'm. Oh I'm shit! Wow. Tree, I thought we were. I mean, friends. honestly, like I was just like <laughs> throwing darts on a billboard. I hadn't really been following college basketball, so I'm like. I mean, oh, honestly, no. I, 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 I actually I, I, like, I followed I college basketball a little bit more this year than I have in decades. Uh, you I, know, I, I don't follow college basketball. None of you do. <laughs> well, I I, I I live in Fayetteville, Arkansas. The Razorbacks are typically a really damn good team. This year, no, we are number one in baseball. Uh, but uh, tree the final game, which is currently at halftime, Clemson, Arizona. Ooh. I mean, at Clemson's up a bit, right? So Clemson I'm is think. up by Clemson beat Baylor. Yeah. I mean, I'm gonna think Clemson can do it. I think Clemson wins. So it's very good to know that Tree and I have the same thought process. So hopefully, I win money off of that. Yeah, but Tree does not that, just dude. gamble. I, I'm but... a negative jinx, so it's. Just uh, I would actually. Oh yeah, no. What 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 was your? Uh, you said it on your uh, haters guide to MLB. Don't follow your division. <laughs> Actually, what should happen is you bet the exact opposite until you make money. That's how you do it. That's how you make money. It's reverse Nancy Pelosi instead of. <laughs> and that's how you do it. What, the reverse Nancy Pelosi? I thought that was like a 1970s porn movie. <laughs> I, I don't want to see Nancy Pelosi in porn. Nobody wants to see Nancy Pelosi. No. No one wants to see Nancy Pelosi in porn, let alone the Democrats. <laughs> NASCAR fan says I did a bracket for fun, ridiculously close. JMU, because I live in Virginia. I have friends currently in school there right now. I'm 23. 
my friend, I'm 25. I turned 26 in less than three Nico years. Horner up to bat. Two strikes, one ball. There are no outs. Cubs are oh, looking right. to get a nice little lead, y'all. Cubs are up one nothing with no outs. That or with two outs, yeah. No one. Wait, a one out, one out. My game cast did not refresh this appropriately. My so game cast did not refresh neither. Oh Me my! Neither. But, but, but oh, wait, bottom of the second. Rangers are up. Langford's up to bat. Yeah, bo- yeah, I'm bottom What's second. What was going on here? as well? It is a two and one count to Wyatt Langford, and as Tree said, this young kid. This kid can hit a fucking ton. He is a he is a bitch with the stick. I also have Caitlin Clark winning the women's. Oh yeah, tournament. I've gotten money on that five dollars down. Is there anything you don't have money on, Matthew? Uh, the Masters because I didn't know it was coming up, but you got me there. So uh, it's not for like two there. weeks. <laughs> How much are you I putting on the main event at WrestleMania? DraftKings is a partner of WWE. You don't think how I'm going to have money down on that? Oh, yeah, how God. much and who are, you pe- who are you betting on? That's what I want to I will throw $150 on Cody Rhodes to win with the Crossroads. Good call. Now, I will say if there is anything that can sucker me into becoming a degenerate gambler, I have to admit this, it is horse racing. I there love horse racing, and the Triple Crown's coming up, the Kentucky Derby. My mother, God rest her soul, was a huge horse racing fan. She was uh, an equestrian. We had horses growing up when I was a kid. So horse racing, I'm a bit of a, I'm a bit of a sap for. I have to admit, and there's something about you know the crowd singing "My Kentucky Home" and yep. uh, it's just. Uh, I had this dream of me going to the Kentucky Derby and in my VIP box, I've got Bill Murray, Jeff Daniels, Keith Richards. Uh, Keith Richards? Damn. <laughs> oh, Keith Richards is my favorite guitar player of all the time. Not the best guitar player, but he's my favorite. My favorite guitar player is Jimi Hendrix, but I think there we all go. know why that is. Uh, well, see, no, I love up. Jimmy. I mean, I've got all of Jimmy's vinyls downstairs in my rec room, but Keith is my favorite. Like, because he, if, if I were ever going to actually make it as a guitar player, which I never will, I would try to follow the Keith Richards model, five strings, three fingers, and one asshole to play them. And no <laughs> drugs? <laughs> I, I have not touched strong drugs since I was 25 years old, so I am 12 years... Uh, sober from the heavy shit. Because the question on everyone's mind is, how is he still alive? <laughs> Dude, his yeah. his his mom lived into her late nineties. His dad lived in his early nineties. Keith has got some kick ass DNA. In the words of, happens. in the words of Red Man from the movie How High. Hi, I'm Jamal. I'm a pothead. <laughs> Duran is up. He has two strikes, no balls, two outs. What? He has no balls? What? <laughs> no balls. You will I have walked no right into that ball. one. He has done every drug known to man and probably a few that haven't even been invented yet. Him and Ozzy together, that's a thats a party, boy, I'll tell you. And let's well, try Oz, Ozzy's been... In, Keith, Keith has been... Making a few o- Ozzy got sober in the... N- Late 80s, early 90s. Keith's only gotten off the... Looks like Duran is out. So that is the end of the second. Coming up top of the third. Cubs will be at bat. Uh, Ozzy... Ozzy's been sober a lot longer than Keith. And I, I have a, I have a question for Urinating Tree. Since he doesn't talk too much about music on his channel. Or really on clickbait. What are your music preferences? What do you listen I've, to? I've never, yeah, that, I've never time. really heard what Tree's music. What, what do you Honestly, listen to? Who do, who do you very go out how I of way to go to concerts to? Did you go I mean, the weird thing, thing is, like, most of what I listen to, like, it varies on how I feel. There's sometimes I'll listen to a lot of old video game music. There's sometimes I'll listen to metal. There's sometimes Fuck I'll listen yeah. to, like, techno. There's sometimes I'll listen to, like, disco and 80s. It varies yeah. on how I feel. It's a mood. It's a situation. It's life. I mean, I, I listen to everything from Mozart to Miles Davis to Metallica. I mean, it's I'm, jazz uh, isn't bad every now and again. 
I, I, I love everything. So if, the if, only if, thing you I could, really if you could give me a top three of concerts that you would go to, Tree. You, 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 you got a front row ticket to any concert ever. What what bands are you going to see? Dead like, or Alive. Dead or Alive? Ooh, I'd have to go Zeppelin. I mean, Yes! I mean, you got to go Zeppelin. Uh, dead or alive? Ooh. I've been listening to Zeppelin all day, so do I I'm go with you Woodstock there. 60, 68? Woodstock 69? 69. 69. Sorry, okay. do I go Woodstock 69 and uh, deal with the S- weed, swim in mud, and as Creed said, make love to many, many women outdoors, and occasionally another man could have slipped in. You never know. Well, I mean, <laughs> didn't there, wasn't there like a hundred thousand, like hundreds of thousands of pregnancies after Woodstock? Uh, like that? Well, the, the actual attendance, food. the actual attendance of Woodstock was estimated somewhere around three to four hundred thousand. Um, as far as pregnancies, I don't know, but the actual attendance was somewhere in and around the four hundred thousand mark. But by the third day, when Hendrix actually played, it was down to about. 50,000. Yeah, because a lot of everyone people was just, just like drunk and high. And... Yeah. Well, you, you had, th- you had, 69 had three uh, big, co- you had uh, Woodstock, you had uh, Altamont with the Stones Altamont, where they hired, disaster. Where, where they hired the, the Hells Angels as security. Well, the problem uh, is they had it on like a flat stage. That was always the weird yeah. part. Uh, and then, was it no? It was sixty-eight. You had Monterey Pop, so yeah, you had sixty-eight Monterey Pop, stock Woodstock in sixty-nine in July, Altamont August of sixty-nine, and then there was another festival not long after that that went to shit. It was, I don't know. It's 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 crazy. Ivaldi is pitching. What's it? The, the well who in tonight. Cincinnati? Was that the one, or was that a little um, later? No, that, that was later. That was later. Uh, you mean the Who? The Who in Cincinnati? Yeah, the Who. In, remember the Cincinnati? Yeah, that was. The, that? Yeah, that that was that was later. That was I think seventy three, seventy four, somewhere in there. Uh, that, yeah, that was much later, and that was uh, an actually you know, arena thing. Yeah, it was just like crowding the uh, the door. Yeah. Uh, then there was also uh, there was an ACDC concert. Where uh, a fan got killed. It's ugh. Yeah, it gets rough. Rest in they peace, got, Dimebag Daryl. They've got uh, uh, Josh Jung on a microphone interviewing him live as he's trying to play on the field. I hate that. Can anybody do else? Do. Does anybody else hate that other than me? I like I, that. I don't I like, like it. it. It's distracting. It's absolutely it's distracting. distracting. Tree, what do you think? You've been doing coverage the, for baseball much longer than we baseball have. Baseball players having the microphone on during games. It depends. I mean, does it distract them from the field of play? I feel like so, I, I feel like and it, Madrigal grounds is, out to third. Like you'd just be sitting there like, okay, um I mean it, it's an interesting thing, but at the same time, I I don't know. You just got the play, but I mean, I mean, if, he, if he's sitting there talking in the dugout, that's one thing. When the camera is on him and they, he's got the earpiece so that the commentators can talk to him and ask him questions, that's where I draw the line. Especially like, because they do it to infielders for the most part. But like, if you're doing it to an outfielder, okay, cool. They've got time to react. They've got time to. Such Jan and such. Gomes fly up to, to right a, two outs. You do it to an infielder, like a third baseman, a shortstop. You know, they've got a split second from when the pitcher gets it out of his hand to get ready and potentially field that play. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, it'll it work a lot better if you're, like Stat Boy said, you're doing it to a batter in the dugout. You're doing it to an outfielder. I don't yeah. like it for infielders. I don't know if they've ever done it for a pitcher or a catcher. In half grounds out to third. That is into the top of the third. Rangers coming up to the plate. There has been a lot of scoring throughout the MLB today. What do you guys think of? Because I think last year we were like. The Dodgers uh, put up some runs. 
last year I think we were talking about how many runs were put up on opening day. Do you guys think that there have been more runs put up today than there was last year? Uh, well, we also had two games postponed due to weather. Uh, I mean, I there there you have been runs scored, goal. not by my White Sox, but um, it's it, it's not necessarily the amount of runs scored. It's just how are the runs coming? Are they coming from you know singles, sacrifices, steals, or are they just coming from? You know, piss rods getting hit to the upper, you know, ba-boom, 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 ba-boom. I, I, I don't like home runs just being the, the main thing. I, I like scoring to come, but from, you know, actual infield play, if that makes any sense at all. I mean, that's, I think, the issue of what baseball was trying to fix. Because it became a three true outcomes game. It became strikeout, walk, or home run. Yeah. And I think people were turning out because of it. They, they last year they did a much. We had more stolen bases last year than we've had in what was it 15, 20 years? Uh, it, it was a long time since we've had as many stolen bases. I, mean, I love the pitch 70. clock, yeah. I love the pitch clock, I love the larger bases, I love actual play in the field as opposed to just like you said, walk out, uh, walk, strike out, home run. Mm-hmm. And it, and it also, you know, it, it allows for pitching, for there to be, you know, multiple dimensions of pitching. You can have your strikeout pitcher. You can have your ground baller. You can have your pitch-to-contact guy. So, I do have the current totals for opening day baseball as of right now. With All right. Are you doing my job, game. Maddie? I am stealing your job. I apologize, stat boy. No problem. I go right ahead. I'm drinking. There, <laughs> have, been, there have been a total of... Today, opening day baseball, 79 runs as of right now. And we still have several games to go. And, yeah, I was about to say, as Cap said, we still have. We know the Rockies aren't going to be scoring any. but Is it in Coors Field, though? (laughs) No, Colorado hadn't played yet. (laughs) It is in Chase Field. It is in Chase Field. Okay. So the Rockies are terrible on the road. And then the Red Sox Mariners in Seattle. So we've got Guardians Athletics in uh, Oakland. We've got Rockies Diamondbacks in Arizona. Red Sox Mariners in Seattle. So we still have a total for like another 10 runs to still be put up. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. So as compared to last year, I'm going to look up last year's opening day stats. Give me just a second. Take your time. So again, sorry for stealing your gimmick, Stat Boy. <laughs> hey, I'm Stat Maddie. Stat Maddie, yeah, there you go. Statty Maddie? Statty yeah, Maddie. Statty, Statty Maddie, hey, why not? Hey, I'll, 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 I'll endorse it. Why not? <laughs> Maddie has more gimmicks than I, I've lost count of his. I think he's up to about 57 different nicknames and whatever. Pick one. <laughs> <laughs> what was that the, the, the checker scene in uh, in Bad Santa okay. pick a move and stick with it would you <laughs> give me just a second and I will tally everything up for opening well, day here's my question time. does the does the two second shave off the pitch clock really make a difference it does make a difference but not a huge difference uh, I, I love the pitch clock they have got to speak if, I if also love the pitch clock all things Neutral and whatever. The uh, baseball games should be done in two to two and a half hours. I agree. Not three and a half, four hours. Uh, The pitch clock is the. If there is one thing that comes from the current commissioner's uh, reign that I will say is awesome, is the pitch clock. That I, I love it. And then the other question would be. the uh, kickoff rule. What do you think of that? The new kickoff rule. Oh, I like it. I like the. I, I don't like the new hip drop tackle rule, but I love the new kickoff rule. I think they it's needed to do something. Be entertaining. They needed it, to do something with that rule. Kickoffs were basically holy yeah. shit, guys. Okay, so never mind. Last year might have been the most runs put up on an opening day because 
There was 127 runs put up opening day as of last year. Oh, you kind of jumped the, the gunner a little bit there, didn't you? Jesus. And there also was a potential rule. I don't know if they've killed it or if they're still discussing it. They want to uh, eliminate the onside kick. And uh, they want to see if you can uh, retain possession after a touchdown by doing a fourth and Yeah, I, I, I have heard that. As far as this year, though, from what I understand, onside kick rules are still the same, right, Tree? Like, the onside kick remains as it was. It's just the actual regular kickoff that that they're uh, augmenting, for lack of a better phrase. Yeah, I kind of like. Well, I kind of like the concept of a fourth and twenty, but then I'm like, could it be possible that a team just retains possession forever if they're if they're by some miracle that good? Oh, we scored. Let's keep the ball. Let's do another fourth and twenty. Let's keep the ball and not even let the other team okay. play. Okay, so I watched a little bit of XFL last year, not as much right. as Brandon Perna did, but. There were teams that were using that and were keeping possession for like more than a three quarters of the game because they were that so, good, or the other team was just that like, like that. they were that good at converting on a fourth down. So, to me, it seems a little I, I hokey and campy. Like that. Yeah, I yeah. don't like that. I want to keep the onside kick in there because it gives the kicker more of a skill position than anything. Yeah, but it doesn't it doesn't play out as often as either. I mean, the, for I mean for one, the, the ten yard rule, the ball has to go ten yards. Uh huh. You got to get the luckiest bounce, or you got to you got to place that ball just yes. right to get a shot. Seiya Suzuki up for a second at bat. You got to hope the receiver can can like drop the ball or fumble the ball, like kick it at a kick it at his shoulder, have the ball bounce off his shoulder. That's a live ball. Jump on the grenade, get possession. It's it's too rare. Yeah. And also, I mean, these are NFL players, and a fourth and twenty. As much as we would like to shat upon the rules that allow for offense to sort of do what they want. A fourth and 20 is still a fourth and 20. And there may be a handful of teams. This is that. also the NFL. Yeah. I mean, okay, I mean, maybe if you're Patrick Mahomes, you want the fourth and 20 rule. Because all he has to do is take a snap, move a little bit, and then get, you know, sacked for there to be an automatic first down roughing the yeah. passer. <laughs> Or but also, let's practice. not forget the other new rule change. This hasn't really been talked about much. The replay booth now has the ability to reverse roughing the passer um, and I think pass center, the, the replay booth can overrule the referees. Yeah, but with roughing That's the passer really. and intentional grounding. But the problem is, like, yeah. we tried this with pass interference. Is it actually going to do anything? That's my Absolutely, question. because... Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, calling calling pass interference, I'm sorry to say it with, 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 with such authority, bitch move, okay? If you can't get, catch the ball, you can't catch the ball. Big deal, okay? The slightest little touch, oh, where's the pass interference? He, he wasn't going to get the ball any any chance he had. There was no contact, but the, they, they abused that penalty. Bottom yep. line. They, they abused it. They abused I it. I also, uh, again. And, and it, they've it, abused it, roughing uh, the passer. What, they, with, they, with, with my with my oh I breathed on the quarterback I'm sorry I was running full speed right. for ten yards and I couldn't stop myself to luxuriously grasp him around the waistline and gently bring him down in a loving way I have I have one gripe with the pass interference because it's completely up to referee compliance if it's a catchable ball or not. I have seen so many pass interference thrown on plays. Suzuki that are flies not out to passable. center. He is out, and Bellinger is up. Come on, Cody. We, hey, we've we've got a, a question for Tree. From a new viewer, yes. uh, Dainsky. Thank you for tuning in, Tree. Who do you suspect the Stillas are going to round one, and who are your draft crushes? Players you oh. want on the Stillas? Who? Oh, this is a good one. 
I want the Oregon center, Jackson Powers Johnson. Ooh, you guys need an him. interior offensive line. Yep. We cut that, that, would, that would be the missing we piece. Center. Yeah. We need a one bad. I mean, wide receiver would probably be an interesting option if they don't find one for number two. Rumors are they're trying to get Tyler Boyd, but I think there's cap issues there, and I think he's more of a slot. So it mostly depends on uh, who they're looking for. Like, dream, pipe dream scenario would either be T. Higgins or Justin Jefferson. But I don't know if they're going to need more. But we'll see. If Steelers, I mean, and honestly, again, as we spoke about this earlier with Russell Wilson, you had another really good offensive lineman. Steelers have a top 5-7 offensive line, arguably, if you get another, if you get that center that you were talking about. Uh, you've got two really good running backs. Russell can still move a bit. Russell needs protection and time to do Russell Wilson magician things. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think he's more of a low-end starter right now. I think the thing is, we're not going to get, like, the Seattle Russell Wilson, but I think he can still do a job. What if you guys do get Seattle Russell Wilson? What if it was just a Denver problem? What if it was a Denver problem? I'm a Broncos and I'm laughing at Perna. It was the altitude. It was Sean Payton. You've got two people to laugh at now, damn it. I think (laughs) the problem is, like, Sean Payton didn't like him. That's the reality. Sean Payton likes nobody except Drew Brees and... And Taysom Hill. And Taysom Hill, yeah. I was about to say, Taysom Hill, I still, I will still scream from Bellinger the Bellinger rounds out to second, top. two outs, Morell is up. I will Way still go, scream Cody. from the damn mountaintops that Taysom Hill needs to be the starting quarterback for New Orleans. But I digress. They're never going to Give okay it up, Maddie. Give it up. No, no, no. Hold on, Captain. Hold on. He's got a point. Taysom Hill could be a good thing in New Orleans. He, he, he can throw a ball better than Derek Carr. Thank you. There you go. There's the point right there. You just said it. Oh, I, I asked that rhetorically. You really think Taysom Hill can throw a ball better than Derek Carr can? Yes, I believe uh, he can because look, I'm I'm getting I'm getting really sick and tired of the Derek Carr Carr uh, playbook. I really am. I'm sorry. The thing I like Derek Carr, but I didn't think he was going to move the needle in New Orleans because. New Orleans has a lot of other issues than quarterback. Quarterback yes. wasn't really that problem when I signed. It was the weird thing. Nice base hit. Well done, Morell. Good job. Morell gets on. And that is going to bring up Dansby Savanson. <laughs> and then there's also a new rule being uh, brought up in the NHL uh, saying that if they, they can uh, challenge delay of game, of course, if you know, if uh, if the in penalty hockey? goes through, yeah, in hockey, yeah, the challenge is a delay of game in hockey. Here's okay. the thing. Well, well, the, I'm not a hockey you, guy. I'm not delay a of game. Guy. What happens is uh, for a delay of game, if you shoot the puck and it doesn't go off the boards and goes right over the glass, that's a delay of game. Exactly. But if they challenge it and it gets denied, it's a double penalty, five on three. So, so, okay, okay. so to, to, to the two hockey guys below me. Yes. Can somebody fucking explain icing to me? When the puck goes all the way down the length yep. of the ice without being touched. That's icing. And you have to do it fast like the red line. So it's uh, not, if you do it after the red line, that's not icing. But it's before the red line, nobody touches it, then it's icing. So it? so if you if you basically just fucking launch it from one end of the ice to the other. Yes, yep, that's icing. Okay, that's icing. even if it's accidental. Yes. Yep. Well, yeah. I mean, that's why, like, there's a lot of icings for, like, players who shoot for the empty net on, like, empty net situations. I got you. So, yeah, that's that, that's being considered for next season as well, too. I mean, to, to, to have a five-on-three, if, if you don't score on a five-on-three, though, I mean... Uh, uh, I saw a, a game recently. The Wild were playing the Knights. The Wild are still are still alive, by the way. Minnesota mm-hmm. fans. They still are. Oh yeah, it's it's a wonderful. They're thing. on the fringes. The, the Wild had the Knights five on three, and they're shooting left and right. It took one of the Knights losing their stick to finally have the Wild score. It was like five on against two and a half at that point. Good question from Dineski. Given. Uh... 
We're oh. covering MLB opening. I day. think it's I think it's Dainsky. Dainsky, Dineski. But got another one for everyone. When you think baseball, what memory does your mind go to? I can give you a specific, specific moment. So can All I. Right. Manny so Ramirez going into the green monster to take a piss. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> I okay. remember because they, they cut over to that and they see him going into the monster and I'm like, what? What is he doing? And then he comes out, and as I got older, I saw a YouTube video that was like, yeah, he went and took a piss inside the monster, and I'm like, are you kidding me? That's just so, Manny yeah, being Manny. That, when I think baseball, my immediate thought process goes to, yeah, Manny Ramirez went and took a piss inside the giant green monster. For me, my, oh, go ahead, my immediate Kevin. thought goes to the 98 home run chase, because that was Good the apex was of my... My kid, them. I got into baseball really young, like 94, 93, 94. The 98 summer home run chase is sort of the apex of my kid, them. And then I sort of, you know, I got into junior high and then high school. And then that was sort of the apex of my kid, them. My, you know, my, my, my little boy baseball, you know, where I was just, you know, the, the kid at the games with the glove and, you know. Yep. And watching all the home runs, then you know I got a little bit older, and but when I think back, it's it's that '98 home run chase. I, I hate to say it, it was that and playing Ken Griffey Jr. baseball on N64. There you uh, go, classic. Yeah, that 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 was that when I first think of baseball, that's my first memories. Uh, that and the 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 '98 home run chase and that early Yankee that yeah that Yankees dynasty. In the late '90s, 2000s, and also, I have to throw another one: the, the Braves dynasty with the division titles and the pitching staff. You know, Greg Maddox, John Smoltz, uh, uh, oh, Maddox, also, also, Smoltz, sorry, and sorry Gladden. To cut yeah, you off. Sorry that. To cut you off. So, so that was my my childhood. You know, I, '98 I home run race, Ken Griffey baseball, and the Yankee and, and the Braves. Yankees dynasty, pitch, Braves pitching, a lot of things. Go ahead, Matty. I, I, I will say, sorry to cut you off. So many memories. <laughs> when I was young, I wrote a book report because I picked up a book on a man named Jim Abbott. Ooh. I know that the guy. One, the one-handed pitcher for the Los Angeles Angels. Yep. And whenever I found out that he was one-handed, I was like, how in the hell... Was this man able to get any major league career going? He did. It wasn't the greatest career, but for somebody who had one hand and a stump, yep, to be able to pitch the way that he did was incredible. So I can also say one of my earliest memories and something that I will always go to is my Jim Abbott research. Well, you heard the one about the uh, the one arm piano player. It took okay. him two minutes and, and to play the minute waltz. And it, it <laughs> is, it is Dane Ski. So I was correct on the first try. Dane so, Ski. Thank you for tuning in. My apologies. So everybody else, uh, we'll go with Tree first. What is your, you know, baseball memory that your mind goes to? Oh, I would probably have to go with probably the wild card 2013 <clears throat> with the Pirates for the freak show of 97. Freak show that of 97. That would be the two. With uh, the Pirates. I mean, they were a $9 million payroll, nearly won the division. Well, I'll, also, I do have to say the 2003 and 2004 ALCS, Yankees, Red Sox. I, I, I remember being a, a, a kid in high school watching those games and the Red Sox coming back from being three down. The, maybe the most miraculous sports moment I've ever gotten to watch. I'm not a Red Sox fan, but by God, for those seven games, I was a Red Sox fan because they were doing the unthinkable and defeating the evil empire. Mm-hmm. Reverse sweep, baby. Mm-hmm. And I don't think we've seen that in baseball since that I can recall. We haven't uh, seen not, it before. Not in baseball. We've seen it in hockey two times. 
Yeah. No, I think we, he, we, we uh, saw it in basketball too. Did, did we? Was it LeBron? No, and we were close in basketball. That's right. That's right. They, they, they had one. Because I think what happened was the the uh, the the Celtics were close to reverse sweeping the Heat, but they fell apart in Game Seven. Yes, they did. The reverse sweep. Because I'm not gonna lie, rough. if the Nuggets played the uh, the the Celtics, I don't know if we would have won. I think you doubt your Nuggets too much, Maddie. Uh, I think Bro, this Nuggets I team watched Kobe is Kobe make us look like a bitch for ten years. Young <laughs> flies out. Uh, actually, no, Young doubled to right. Young is on second. Adolis Garcia is up. My I don't really think really there's good. a team that can beat the Nuggets other than Boston. I, I just I, I don't really see it. That's a double. It, it, my base, my baseball memory was uh, July fifth, nineteen ninety one, Dodger Stadium, uh, L.A. versus Atlanta, first baseball game ever. Uh, of course, watching Vince Scully on KTLA Channel 5. That, you know, talking and about... And welcome to Dodger Baseball. There you go, man. God, I love me some Vince Scully. Oh, I, I miss him game. greatly. I greatly do. I, I mean... And, and I've... I, 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 not, not to interrupt you, but... No. I got into, like, MLB TV and audio back in, like, 2000... Oh, yeah. 2007, 2008... And I, and, and I told people for years and year, any baseball, like, pay for this so you can listen to Vin Scully call baseball games. Yep. And very few did it. But the ones who did, the ones who did is like, dude, that was that was incredible. Like, I, I didn't know baseball could be, like, I wasn't even caring about the game. I was just listening to him. Just Exactly. Him. You know, I mean, I wanted to meet him so many times. I never got a chance to. Bob Uecker to a little less. I, I still love Bob Uecker. He's still alive. Yeah. Keep going, Bob Euchre. But Vin Scully was a fucking master. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hey, sorry to interrupt you. Go ahead, Step Boy. It's Dodgers. Good. It's good. Uh, so Dodger Stadium, you know, iconic. Went there. Saw Tommy Lasorda get kicked out of the game. That's my bet. That's my number one memory. There was a bad call. He comes out. He does the the head shake. Um, throws him out. The the crowd goes wild. You know, because and this was towards the end of, of Tommy's. Uh, yeah, not, not you said ninety one. Uh, yeah, nineteen. Yeah, yeah, that, that was that was the towards the end of Lasorda's run. Yeah, and uh, then you know I, I kept up with the Dodgers, but I Langford up the Angels. one out. And uh, you know I would watch the freeway series. I would do the the, the thing. You know, turn off the commentary on the television. Turn on Vin Scully. And then, you know, he announced his retirement. I'm like, I can never watch another Dodger game again. And luckily, the Kings won the Stanley Cup that year. They brought the Stanley Cup to Dodger Stadium, and he's sitting there talking about hockey, marveling at the Stanley Cup. And I got to see – I finally got to see him in the stadium when they did convert uh, Dodger Stadium to a hockey rink. He and Bob Miller came out leading out the Kings and the Ducks. Ducks won that game, by the way, so I'm very happy about that. But still, I mean, there there have been just so many, so many things. But it, it, that that one, that's the one that sticks out to me. Uh, to to Damn, to throw team. another one on that. Um, yeah. Uh, well, you, you mentioned Lasorda. That was sort of the tail end of his run. Then you got into Bobby Cox and mm. his great run of getting ejected from games. Um, I Lasorda was – baseball is great at producing fucking characters. Oh, yeah. And, and mm -hmm. w w when I think of, you know, great, uh, great ejections, you know, obviously, you know, uh, obviously Bobby Cox – Tommy Lasorda, um, oh, the, the the manager for the Yankees. Uh, oh, uh, oh, um, oh what, Rick, what was his Rick, name? Um, damn it. The guy that uh, Steinbrenner always fired, right? Yeah, Ste he, Steinbrenner like fired and hired him like seven times. Uh, little, 
Oh, what was, oh, what was his name? I, I know exactly who you're thinking of too. It's, yeah, I can't think of him. Uh, Martin. And was it Martin? It's cr- it's Billy, crazy. Billy Martin. When, Billy Martin. Yeah, and then also, but, but the it's best crazy injections. When three people. It's crazy when three people know the name of the person but can't fucking get it. Billy Billy <laughs> Martin. But the most entertaining ejections came from Earl Weaver with Baltimore. <laughs> he was like five foot five. And didn't care Ooh. about a damn thing. He would just get in the ump's face. Uh, God, Earl Weaver was... Uh, God, uh, oh, Earl Weaver. Uh. And it looks like we have gone to the end of the fourth. It is 1-1. Uh, it looks like Langford drove in a run on a sacrifice. We are heading to the top of the fifth. As, okay, as, boys. As Harry Dole would say, top of the fifth. We got we got a question <laughs> from over-enthusiastic intern Caleb. That's a fantastic name, That's by the way. That's a hell of a name. I like uh, it. What's a more impressive way to win a playoff series? Reverse sweep or winning all your road games? Or but no, losing that, or, or no, winning all your sweep. home games? But losing all your home games, reverse sweep all the way. Because if you're losing all your home games, you're you're disappointing your home crowd. Also, if you don't have home ice advantage, or if you have home ice advantage, you're out of the playoffs. It, it's it's the same thing with you know basketball. Because like, yeah, you could do a reverse sweep, but you have to do that in an impressive way. If you lose all of your home games in the series but have to win all of your road games so much more difficult because those fans are booing the shit out of you giants when you're won the super bowl anything. twice starting out as wild card teams steelers did it in uh, 06 oh. yep memory of baseball for me was one of my very first nats game it was against the pirates i was sitting right above the way the away team dugout and watched the nats win in extras Ooh, that's 2019 a good one. Nats won the World Series by losing all home games but winning four games in Houston. In Houston. Mm-hmm. In Houston. And still as treat uh, still to this day what I think is one of your top 5 videos ever, your video on the Washington Nationals winning that World Series and your your tail end piece I'm at the very end of that. Now. The, Rich Knight, well, I'm which, which was the, the the theme at the end of Chernobyl from HBO, yep. mm-hmm. uh, it's just and you brought all these players from Detroit. That that was that your Harold Ballard days of our Steelers. Those to me are like your top three videos you've ever done. Because I was like, this guy tied everything together, and it was perfect. Uh, that, that was that, that was that, that was that was peak tree. <laughs> tree. Everyone keeps saying I fell. I fell off like Humpty Dumpty. Let's go, baby. No, you have <laughs> never fell off. Don't. I mean, that's what go. everyone says on Twitter. Let's be real. I'm just saying that. If, if if anybody says that, I will go to bat for you. But no, you're one of my favorite episodes of you. And I got three of them over there. <laughs> I will. I will join him. I will be like staying on that nitro in '97, just passing out bats to to everybody. Like we're going to bat for tree. <laughs> I can't remember which week it was, but it was when both Le'Veon Bell and Antonio Brown both made headlines, and you were oh, like, Lord. I can't do this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> like, the days of our Steelers music is going, and you are just so dejected at this point. You're like, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> and then, well, I... Like I said, I was listening to your your pirates videos the last couple days, um, and your your auditory description of the pirates pitcher who shall remain nameless, who was caught up in that uh, scandal, and I think you, you just got deported. Mm, so yeah, uh, that was y- your rant in that video. It's like get the fuck out, you super. Sick motherfucker! <laughs> oh yeah, that was that was bad. Yeah. Well, Wander Franco uh, has been he placed on, I believe, administrative leave or something yeah, like that. He's, he's done. 
Yeah. Uh, He's well, out of the see, league. See, that one saddens me more because I, I'm a baseball – like, I follow minor league shit. Like, I, I keep a – a spreadsheet of minor league players. I go to minor league games just seven miles up the road for Kansas City's double A team. Like I, I fall in love with these players in the minor leagues. And Franco was like one of those that's like, dude, this guy's gonna be a beast. He he's so awesome. And yeah, then and he, he works his way through the minors and then he gets to the majors and he, he gets and he's that playing. big contract too. And then that shit happens and I'm like I, I <laughs> Maddie can because we, we we covered it on on a couple of our no, shows. We, it, I was I was insane. speechless and I was sad. Like this is I'm sad for the victim. I'm sad for the player. I'm sad for the game. Like this is it, it was this is it was awful. multiple victims. That's the sad. Yeah, thing. Was, and the mother who was we acting as a madam, more or less. Information via text message, like when we read those. Yeah, we, we, yeah, when we were, yeah, we were, we were reading that shit on the on the oh. show. Motherfucker, it's like, good God, people. It, it's been an interesting off season for baseball. It's okay. just it, it gives you, <laughs> it gives you an insight into. And, and and forgive me for saying this, it gives you an insight into a lot of these players that play in, for lack of a better phrase, third world countries, Cuba, the Dominican. Uh, th there's the old phrase, you don't uh, walk off the island. You have to be really good to get to the bigs. Yep. But also in those third world environments, there is a lot of shit for lack of a better phrase, that, that goes on that we're often not privy to. I mean, we know about certain guys that, uh, and again, for you know, that did that the raft, that, 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 that did, that did the raft ride. You know, that had to, you know, migrate here under, you know, political, legal, potential persecute. You know, all, all guys that didn't do anything like this, but you just. The horrors of what goes on in those countries, and occasionally someone like Franco, however, gets in that mess, and it it, it gives you an insight into like the the world that these guys live in, who come from those South American, uh, you know, Cuban, Dominican, Venezuela, those countries. Things aren't like th things aren't going on there the way they normally go on here, and it it, it makes you sad just to, to know that that kind of sick shit goes on there and is not only tolerated but in some instances is again it, it, yeah it, it's, it's, it's like it's like. All we would say, you know, well, in the U.S. would say it's like a parking ticket. Oh, you got a parking ticket. Well, down there, that kind of thing is sometimes it, it it's sad and it's pathetic. I I hate it. I yeah. it's. I mean, it, it makes me sick. Is... I wish I could go. With, I, w I wish I could just unleash a thirty minute, you know, Jim Cornette profanity laden promo on it but for lack of a better it, it makes me fucking sick that that shit still goes on anywhere in the developed world anyway it, it pissed away a nine figure career because of it that's the disgusting part bro to make that much money to do that disgusting of shit it's insane mm -hmm. it's absolutely insane I mean uh... anywho What's the yeah. current score? What's the current stat? It is one to oh, one, top of the one, fifth, one out. Fifth. Madrigal is up to bat. Ivaldi is still on the mound. Uh, it is... Oh, Madrigal grounds out into a double play, and we head to the top... Uh, pardon me, the bottom of the fifth. Rangers coming up to bat, and it is going to be Jonah Heim, the catcher, I believe, uh, leading off for the... Rangers in the bottom of the fifth. Texas has a very slight 51-49 advantage in their win probability at this point. So this is a good game. 
See, I like it when, when a game is close like well, this. See, last year when we did this fundraiser, I was watching the White Sox get demolished by the Astros and us just making horrible bullpen decisions. And I literally had Bro, a... we made money within fucking half an hour of that show. No, I, I literally... I had a, a beer amid going on on my desk. I had about 15 beer cans stacked up. And when we were making horrible bullpen decisions, I just did a whoosh and knocked about 15 beer cans across the room. Because it was, it was like, really why the fuck are you bringing in Lopez? It was not. That is the biggest much. question. I do remember. Uh, I, I do remember uh, there was a there was a game six scenario in the World Series. I don't remember the the pitcher though, but I could clearly remember he was really ticked off that uh, he was being pulled. I all and I I don't remember the team, but I do remember the scenario. And it was on Fox, so it had to be recent. But I'm like, um, why, why would you pull him? I want to say it was maybe in the St. Louis series or something. I don't know. I can't remember. It, 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 it's too vague. I know. I apologize. But there was a scenario. Uh, he, he was struggling a little bit. Coach came out to give me the ball. And let's just say you could read lips quite well, better than what happened on Monday Night Raw this week with The Rock. Uh, <laughs> well, see, that instantly made me think of the two, uh, 2003 ALCS when they sent Pedro out to the mound for the seventh inning after he was already over 100 pitches. I think and so. And everyone was like, this whole, like, Pedro, once he hits 100, you got to yank it. Like, it's just, it's his his arm goes to shit after that. And they I kept swear, him in, sh- and, and the Yankees won, won the really ALCS little. that year. I that swear that got great a little fired. As soon as that opening segment happened and, and Rock said what he said, there were people on Twitter, what did he say? What did he say? Who's reading lips? And I thought he said, tonight I'm going to make you my bitch. But he said, of course, he said, tonight I'm going to make you bleed. So he didn't try to hide it, and he was he was right. Looks like Duran doubles to center. Rangers have a man on second. No outs. They are getting shit going. Carter is up to bat. Boo. Oh, the rookie. Oh, never mind. It's the rookie. Never mind. Fourth over round draft pick. Wow. Good hit. Oh, oh, this oh. guy was crushing. Yeah. We got to keep an eye on this guy. Oh, don't get arrogant now. Don't get arrogant now. Come on now. Don't don't taunt the other team. Come on. Come on. You've got a cross on your cheek. Don't do that. God doesn't like that. <laughs> Especially during Lent. It used to be on your forehead. <laughs> yeah, Lent is... Uh... As a baptized Catholic, I know these things. I actually have my Pope Francis bobblehead here on my, on my desk. <laughs> there he is. There he is. Well, I'm, I'm up, so I have sometime. to wait an, a whole other month to celebrate Easter now, but I'm not a practicing Orthodox person anymore. I practice. I like going on egg hunts. Come <laughs> <laughs> on, Maddie. <laughs> I like going on egg hunts. The no, schnozberries taste like schnozberries. <laughs> Officially, we don't do the egg not the egg hunts. We we do something different with the eggs. Oh, yeah, we scramble them and turn them into omelets loaded with ham and cheese. No, well, what we I, do, I will. We I will say, them, we we dye so, them red and we play this game. And you 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 hold your egg and then you go up and you crack your egg against somebody else's and whoever egg cracks gets bad luck for like months. I I will say. I used to Get. dye all of I used to dye all of my eggs like an entire dozen. We would hard boil them and then we would end up eating them as hard boiled. Carter's eggs. out. But... Tavares is up. One out. Top of the fifth with a man on second. Oh, hey tree, do you have do you have any fantasy baseball leagues going? What is your favorite <sighs> fantasy league going? Do you do any fantasy? I don't think tree does any fantasy. Sports I at haven't all. done fantasy have in a long time. I used to do fantasy football, but I haven't been able to. I used to do yeah. fantasy baseball, but I'd always lose interest in May. And I think Justin I've begged Taylor you for years now. to join our league, and then after like the last two years, I was like, I'm just not even going to ask him. He's got too yeah, much I, shit I, going I, on. I don't have time <laughs> to look. We got we got a cubby down. We got Justin Steele. No. Yikes. 
Like, spam no! spam string, He's on my fucking fantasy league! Oh, See, we're talking about fantasy out. leagues and now we're jinxed. You see, Tree brought the jinx. Yep, see? <laughs> Man, I got the out. He got the I out. But he did. Simeon coming up to bat. There's two outs. Uh, Justin <sighs> Steele, we'll see what's going on there with him. Guys, does it look like TJ? Uh, no, it's not TJ. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's okay. hamstring. Yeah, it, it's it's not a TJ. Good uh, God. I, I, Quit thinking I, I, I the did, worst. I, I mean, I'm always thinking worst though. case scenario. He planted his foot. He still got the ball out, but as soon as he threw the ball, he tumbled. Yeah, that uh, uh, that's got to be a hamstring. That's a either a hamstring leg. or lower leg, like a pulled muscle. Yeah, he's walking those, it off. Those though. are. Hamstrings are finicky muscles, so yeah, uh, he'll be well, done. Hopefully, for the day. this gets Corey Seager two hits. So, who are the or Cubs going to bring in to pitch? Because that's going to take Steele out. They're going to be cautious there. Uh, They're probably going long reliever. I mean, let's see who is in the Cubs bullpen. I uh, don't. They're going to commercial, I think. Yeah, they're going to commercial for this. Yo soy okay. no es like. <laughs> Maddie, you're Hispanic. You're supposed to be able to speak your own native tongue. I well, well, hold the, okay. I'm not very good at my own either, so don't pick on him, okay? Uh, yes, I have I a am, behind you, but I can barely get my own language out. I am no is like you are Puerto <laughs> Rican. <laughs> you are Puerto Rican. Perfect English. I am no is like. <laughs> or you could be like our buddy out in LA, Suge, and just be soy sauce. <laughs> <laughs> soy I've sauce. never laughed. I've never laughed harder than any. Uh, Suge, we love you, buddy. We love you, Suge. That is just the one of the funniest moments in the history of our career. Oh. Uh, NASCAR fan says I do the same where I pay attention to a Nats single low A team. Fred Nats, and I've been following some of these guys coming up. Mm-hmm. It, it, it depends on who you follow coming up, yeah, because I mean, when I was yeah. when I was a young warthog, when I was a young warthog, when I was a young warthog, exactly. <laughs> uh, I saw tree is grimacing. I mean, dude, it's uh, you gotta bring out the Lion King every now. And then. <laughs> <laughs> well, any, anytime one of us lets out a good belch, the line is "Good one, Pumba." <laughs> yeah, there you go. I, I saw, I saw the Double A's Springfield Cardinals play the Tulsa Drillers. In that game, I saw both Cargo and I believe a you know Tulowitzki before he left Double A into Triple A. Which he left AAA to meet immediately into MLB, but yeah, no. Go to your, you know, farm league teams. If you are close to your local AA, AAA, hell, even single A, it's worth going to watch for a couple of bucks. But you're also getting the chance to see someone who may go to the majors. And you can follow for their entire career. So Carlos Gonzalez, I was able to follow his entire career. That's insane. Hmm. Tree, how close do you live to the where the Pirates play? About 30, 40 minutes away. Uh, speaking oh, of which, geez. Julian, yeah, I moved out of the area for a little bit. But just I'm like, I'm still in the area. I still get good internet out here. Uh, Julian Merriweather is the pitcher on record now for the Texas or the Chicago uh, Cubbies. I right-handed like pitcher that. with Marcus Simeon at the plate. There you go. Julian Merry- Merriweather had a three and a half ERA last year, so I'm guessing they just had to do something on the fly. It's probably counsel. This is his first two tests. So he's he's literally going to pitch for like two innings, and then they're going to go to another relief pitcher. They're going to go to a gonna seventh go inning guy. relief pitcher, yeah. and then. That's a good story. Well, they'll, they'll go to at least the seventh, I feel like. Because I don't think the Cubbies have that deep of a bullpen, do they? 
They had a strong Ooh. bullpen a couple of years ago, but they traded everyone. And they have some of, big pieces there. Most, most so. of those people moved up to starters, did they not? Or no, they got traded. I think you know, like Scott Efros oh, got okay. traded. Uh, Carl Edwards mm. kind of famed out. Cubs don't have a very deep pen. It's decent, but it's not deep. If that makes sense. I just need Car- I just need a uh, Corey Seager to hit a double. That's all. I need. <laughs> We'll see. <laughs> really, we'll among your 15 that. parlays, which one is that in? Uh, it's one to get me 70 bucks, so you shut your whore mouth, Cap. <laughs> shut my oh, whore mouth. Maddie, Maddie, Maddie. <laughs> I just had hey, I, I no longer have a whore mouth. I'm engaged. I stopped having a whore mouth about does, a year ago. You could still be a whore for one woman. I was about to say, does oh. it still play around? Does it still play around? And if that's the case... Use a hoe. Could you Send imagine me walks, if I get the left? If I get Corey the, Seager's if I up to the plate. If I use a hoe. If I find use a hoe. Corey, good I am good. begging you. I am begging to the baseball gods. Of well, I've got him on my fantasy team. I would love it if he would do something. Well, Barry Bonds, let Corey Seager hit a double. <laughs> if I ever find or make the right parlay. And I'll, I'll be the first one to brag it on your t- on your Twitter feed. This is how you I'm, win a parlay, Stat Boy. If you be, if you get, I, I already hit a parlay today. So lick, oh, lick the left testicle. But <laughs> I will say, if the Sweet second one Jesus, hits, if the second one hits, if Corey Seager hits a double, you can lick the right testicle as well. <sighs> I am not licking anyone. So, ba- so basically, Maddie wakes up and he looks at his nuts, and that's how he makes his parlays. Like, which one's hanging lower than the I other? I think with both heads. Don't what, what, you question me. What, 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 what is this? A fucked up degenerate gambling game of swing low, sweet chariot? <laughs> uh, Don't worry, I'm not. I'm not taking his bets. Forget it. Not gonna happen. I wouldn't. I, I, I w- If this was a courtroom of gambling, I wouldn't trust Maddie on a stack of Bibles. They'd probably combust. <laughs> they if, the, if the Pope, if the Pope gave Maddie's bets a blessing, I'd be like, uh, "Il Papa, no, no." <laughs> Clemson and UConn are both up on SD State and Arizona, respectively. Come on, Clemson, keep it going. There you go. Good for UConn. Fuck you, Clemson. Ha! I mean, Clemson's still doing well. So, Tree, how many wins do you genuinely think the Steelers are getting this year? I also, would say minimum nine. I minimum nine. Will also minimum ask nine eight. Eight. You're, you're going. You're going. You're going. Minimum nine chalk. and eight because it doesn't matter who they put out there. Nine wins. <laughs> it's, it's, the, more, it's the Tomlin standard. Yeah, it's the, the standard Tomlin is the standard. <laughs> doesn't matter. I honestly, nine. I, I, if. I think the Steelers, I, I don't think they're going to just be fine. I, I think the Steelers, because I, I, I'm a Russell Wilson guy. I Hold love on. Russell. Yep. Hold your tongue because your sensei has arrived. Mr. Buck Ringold, Oklahoma Hall of Famer. Thank you. Buck! You keep, what, you keep what blocking him out, uh, damn it. Damn tell it. You what? I mean, for now, I unfortunately I got to get ready for another stream. But otherwise, guys, thank you for having me on. Tree, uh, thank tree, you, so thank you my on. friend. You thank you so much night. for coming along. It's always a pleasure to be on here, boys. Best wishes. Love thank you, my brother. Thank you, thank you, you for later. all the thank you for all the advice through the years, my friend. Thank Definitely. you. Absolutely, brother. You know all where right. to find me. Where you at me? Thank you as well, guys. I appreciate you. Take you care, care, sir. Thank you so much. Take care, guys. Have a good night, guys. Thank you, Dream. Stay safe. So, and now, the main event of the evening. 60 minutes for the heavyweight championship of the world. The reigning, defending, Major League Baseball champion, Buck Buck, you've been waiting for this for 40 fucking years. Take your goddamn victory lap. <laughs> it I is MLB can't. opening night. The Rangers. I still can't believe they did. <laughs> uh, I must be dreaming. 
<laughs> can't believe they won the World Series. It's been a great off season to say the least. It's just been one heck of a ride, you know. I, I got the I got the gear on. I got the championship gear on. Uh, we raised the banner tonight before the game, so it's just wow. I, I I never thought I'd see the day. I have to ask, Buck. The most vigorous I've ever seen you in a sports celebration was the infamous Texas Tech Texas game at my apartment in two thousand eight. Yeah, the Crabtree catch. Yeah, the Crabtree catch. Yep. What was the Rangers World Series victory like at Casa de Ringgold? Believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> we got the police called on us that no, night. No, the, the police. No way. <laughs> oh, Statboy, you never heard that story? No, please enlighten me. I got to hear this. Okay, so uh, it's 2008. It's Texas Tech versus Texas. Uh Buck and I are hanging at my apartment. We always used to watch college football all Saturday long, all okay. day. And Texas was number one. Texas Tech was number two, number three. I think they were three. Three, yeah. They were three to five. yeah. And it looked like Texas was going to pull it out again. I'm living in an apartment complex in the ghetto of Fort Smith, Arkansas. Michael Crabtree grabs this immaculate reception-type catch, runs it into the end zone for a touchdown, Buck jumps out of his seat after about three Red Baron pizzas and a bunch of appetizers. Damn. No, no, no stimulants, no substances. This this guy's a tea, tea. No substances. And he starts jumping up and down, shouting, Suck it, Texas! Suck it, Texas! Suck it, Texas! He is going batshit for about five minutes. Wow. About 10 minutes later, I'm getting a knock on my door. It's the landlord and the Fort Smith police. Oh, no. Thinking that some some kind of, you know, uh, crazy Menendez brothers fiasco has just unfolded in my apartment. <laughs> and I'm trying to, and, and I was a good time. My landlord's name was like, I was like, no, it's all right. It's my buddy, Texas lost. So he's just, he, he's happy. It's all right. But anyway, sorry to interrupt you, Buck. I had to get that little side story in. The Rangers winning the World Series, it wasn't a Welcome. crazy, it was Welcome more of like a, a resigned, thank you, God. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, obviously, I didn't go quite as crazy as I did the, the night of the Crabtree catch. But uh, <laughs> and, I, and actually, I was in a public place when that happened. I was at a, a local sports bar. Oh, uh, so I wasn't at my house when, when it happened, so I was at a sports bar watching. So it. you're socially constrained. So I was so I was so socially constrained, um, but I was going yes, 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 yes when the final out was made. And you and you deserve from the seasons in hell through everything yeah. the Yankees and the wild card. 2011. I mean, I I, I can, God 2011. 2011 Game I, six. I, I can deal with 2011 now. I don't have to hear about. 2011 anymore. I almost got the cops called on me that night, 2011. <laughs> I, I, I was in, at my apartment in Fort Smith. I had the game on on the radio. Um, I had a patio like on my front balcony, not the the rear, but I had one on the front. And I'm sitting there. I've got my cooler of beer, my smokes. I've got my feet propped up, and I'm listening to the game. And then all that mishigash unfolds, and I started throwing empty beer cans across the the lot. I I I, I started losing my shit. I, I was so fucking pissed. And then it happened again in Game Seven. <laughs> well, oh. fortunately for me, that was a Friday night when Game Seven happened, so I was working a, a, foot, a high school football game, so I didn't have to deal with. Mm. That, but I knew they lost. I mean, when they lost the game, like Game Six, I knew they, they weren't going to come back and win Game Seven. It, it was like when the Cubs lost Game Six on the Bartman play. Yeah, on the Bartman play, well, you just knew Red Game Fox, Seven Red, was Red irrelevant. Fox, 86 on Buckner, same thing. Yeah, Game Six with Buckner. I, I, I yeah. still have the the bad guys won. Yeah, over in my bookcase. Uh, one of the greatest uh, reads you've ever given me, and you've indeed, given me a lot. Indeed. That's a great, great, great read. But yeah, <sighs> uh, I mean, I can I can forget all about. Damn, it's good to see you again, Buck. Series, <laughs> we won the World Series. I still can't believe they won the World Series. 
I, I, I changed my allegiance to the White Sox back in 2014, and I've been suffering every moment of it. Uh, <laughs> as you can see, I have the Frank Thomas jersey behind me. The Indeed, indeed. Uh, I'd, oh, God, the White Sox. Buck, we, we are so fucking bad. <laughs> and I thought, I thought they was going to – I thought they was really going to come on, you know, a few years ago. They had all this great young talent. Oh, we and did. For reason, <laughs> it didn't materialize. It never. It, it didn't happen. Which I mean, it's a, it's a, it's it's all about luck. It's all about luck. You got to have the right luck. You got to have the right thing yeah. all your way. <laughs> and, and that's what happened to the Rangers last year. Everything, especially in the postseason, everything. Except for game five, and I'll, I'll tell you this story yep. here. Game five of the ALCS, I thought we were done, you know. Really? Hit that hit that shot. It, you know, down 3-2 going back to Houston, I, I thought we were done. I thought, okay, it's 2011, 96, all, all that all over again. I didn't think there was any – and, and I'm honest. Even though we won in Houston game one and game two, I thought there was no way he was going to come back and win two straight in Houston. And I, I honestly, I, I, they did. I didn't have any doubts at that. My doubts came in before even the, the regular season ended because the injuries to Degrom and to Scherzer. Right. And I just, I didn't, I didn't think the pitching. Uh, Scherzer did pitch one game in the postseason. Yeah. Um, but I just, I. I didn't think they had the pitching to do it, but they, they surprised the living hell out of me. Just, I uh, mean, like I said, everything came together. Everything came together at the right time. My kind of team, my kind of team. <laughs> Bochi, Bochi is a dead ringer for Lee Brown. I mean, you listen to him. Talk he is. <laughs> you could literally picture Lou Brown answering a phone and saying, tire world. <laughs> Reference and, and Bochi. Mm. Wow, Bochi. I mean, he is the best. Coach he is a who is a the best mother of a manager, manager in, in, in the game today. Uh, Bochi or Andy Reid? Who would you pick? Man, I, 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 I would have to go Bochi. I mean, the great run he had with the Giants, and then I'm, I'm not gonna say no one gave him a chance Ooh. with Texas. Not, not say, I mean. Great managers do great things. We yeah. we we know that that's the history. Great managers take a, a really great manager can take a mediocre to average team and raise them beyond their normal potential. But never in my life did I think he was going to win it like his first year. Well, and, I, you know. I I told uh, a few people at my job. They're going to win it within three years. Of course, I was just being, you know, I guess. Being Cubs up two to one, by the way. Uh, top of the sixth, two outs. Bellinger got a double, an RBI double. Did, did uh, Matty want Bellinger or Seager to make that double? <laughs> I think Matty's grabbing some food. Uh, yeah. Cap's he, kind of he held in this thing. <laughs> he, picked, he picked the wrong player to get that double. Because <laughs> Suzuki doubled and then Bellinger doubled. <clears throat> anyway, uh, Buck, there, you're, you, you're saying within one to three years. Or within three years. Within three years. I mean, no one thought they'd do it in one year. I mean, <clears> I thought <throat> they'd be improved. Especially with the injuries to the pitching staff. Yes, yes, yes. I thought they'd be improved. I thought they'd be competitive. No way that I thought there – no, not a lot of people thought they was going to win the World Series last year at, at this time a year ago. They'd be better, yes. But World Series, you know, I, I thought hey, if they go at least 500, maybe sneak in as a wild card. That'd be fine, you know. But then, yeah, for a first year, I mean, then they, they, they got on this incredible run, and what do you, before you know it, they won they win the World Series his first year there. Well, just for the record, Buck, we, we did our our. I, I wanted to invite you onto our show Tuesday, but I knew you were busy. Uh, we had our MLB prediction show uh, two days ago, where we predicted the winners, the playoff teams, everything for this season. To my credit, I had the Rangers coming in second in the AL uh, West this year. I had the Mariners winning that division this year. Maddie, his ungrateful ass, 
had the Rangers <laughs> finishing third behind the Strohs and the Mariners. So if you, I'm actually, I, I have uh, who, our playoff, what was the playoff teams? Uh, yeah, Maddie has the Rangers as a wild card. I didn't have the Rangers <laughs> making the playoffs just because I think uh, I've got the Orioles, Guardians, Strohs. No, Maddie had the Orioles, Guardians, Strohs, Rangers, Blue Jays. I had Atlanta. Wait, wait, wait. American League. Oh, yeah, I had the Rangers fourth. Fuck it. Nobody's watching anyway. <laughs> I had the Rangers in. Anyway, uh, yeah, we've got the Rangers making the playoffs, not winning the division. I've got the Mariners winning the division this year. Uh, we just had Urinating Tree on. He made a great video a couple of years ago about the history of the Mariners organization kicking their fans in the testicles. Uh, I think this is the year the Mariners win that division. Call me crazy. Call me stupid. Call me, you know, uh, call me Leslie Nielsen. Mariners are winning this division this year. It could happen. It, it could happen. And, and I, I would not. Uh, I love I, the I roster. I love the pitching day. staff. I love this Mariners team. I don't know why. I, I, I love it. I love this Mariner team. And I lived in the Pacific Northwest for a while. I have a soft spot for the Mariners. And I believe we are back to the game. Bottom of the six, no outs. Cubs up two to one. Uh, Haas, uh, while we do have you here, um, like I said, I wish we could have had you on the, uh, the prediction show Tuesday. Um, what are your predictions, thoughts for the 2024 MLB season? Uh, division winners, surprisers, um, playoff teams. Uh, I got the Mariners winning the West. I got the Reds winning the Central. So I like uh, I'm, cu- I'm curious I, I, I as like to your thoughts on at least division winners or surprise teams. Give us, you know, you, you're you're my baseball Sherpa. You, you're you're the get you're the guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I like the Reds a lot in the NL Central too, and Son really anyone's division. But uh, I really like what the Reds uh, are doing, and, and they've got some great young talent. And um, you know, if they could avoid the injury bug. Uh, that's something that's kind of plagued, you know, last year they, they, they kind of made a run there and then, you know, it kind of fell off there uh, near the end. But uh, I'm really high on the Reds in, in the Central this, this year. Uh, I've got the Reds winning the division. Matty has the Pirates winning that division. Nice grab. Uh, I do have to ask on this one, because this is one where – Maddie and I, when we did our predictions, were way far apart. The AL Central. Who wins the AL Central this year? I'm, just, I'm still going to lean towards the Twins. Good call. Good good man. Still lean towards the Twins. I took the Tigers. Boo! I, I jumped on the bandwagon. I took the Tigers. The Tigers, I, I really think they could be the surprise team. I think those wild card. Be than a lot of people think. Um. I don't think they're quite there just yet, but I think I think the Tigers are going to take a big step this year. But I still Though, I really we like love you, sir. Matt and I both had Kansas City finishing second in the AL Central this year. I know your Royals are kind of your American League team next they're to the Rangers. Team. They're my AL yeah. Central. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm, I'm not ready to – I don't think the Royals are going to take a big jump this year just yet. Uh I still think they're a year or two away, um, but okay. but it, I mean their saving grace is they probably play in arguably the weakest division. Oh, don't tell me my team plays in that division, Buck. True, uh, true. and we true. are the weakest team in that true. division. True. We are the weakest link. <laughs> <laughs> but but no, I, I still think the Twins. I think I think the Twins still have. A, a, a better roster on paper, um, and I think the Twins are going to uh, find a way to win that division once again. Well, Hap is uh, up for the Cubs. Bottom of the sixth, one out. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. And Adolis Garcia is up. My yes, is. my stream was behind here. 
Um, well, Cap, I'll, I'll throw out my predictions here real quick. I'll, I'll give you a... Yeah, let's, uh, yeah. Why, why the hell do we get... Why, Stat Boy, please not? give us the predictions. All right, so AL East, I'm going to go with the Yankees. Can't You can't mess with the Yankees. I'm sorry. They're, it's, it's, uh, that's, a, that's a given for me. I'm sorry. Well, I... I, 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 I I, I want to get your predictions for on every division, Step Boy. I do. I had a. I had one question prepared for Buck tonight. Okay. I, I do have to ask this. Go ahead, Buck Ringgold. You've been following baseball for forty years. What? It is gone. Garcia. I have a few Holy seconds. Moly. <laughs> I'm a few seconds behind now. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a whole pitch behind, so now I'm, I'm going to see it in a few seconds here. Garcia oh, Homer. He did. He did. He did. He, he did. <laughs> That's definitely a goner. <laughs> well, as we often used to say on our uh, Oklahoma uh, car Bye-bye. rides when we were, you know, watching, you know, going to football and baseball, what would be your call if you were calling, you know, you, you said you're like, you, you said it was a. Uh, Yours was like a copy of Eric Nadell uh, that you can was it and that, that one history. is history. That ball is history. Yeah, I did have one question to ask you, and and then I want to def- I want to get back to Stat Boy's predictions here. Go ahead, Buck. In your entire forty years now, 35, 40 years you've been watching baseball. Have you ever seen a turnaround like this from top to bottom, minor league to major league, the whole thing, the Baltimore Orioles, who went from being an absolute abject laughing stock a couple of years ago to now the they've got prospects galore. The major league team is good, even with the injuries. I mean, have you seen a team make this kind of a a whip around like this in in your lifetime because I, in, 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 I'm only 37. I've only I've been watching baseball since the mid 90s. Well, it's tough for me to remember a team being this bad to being this good. And and I love the way they're doing. It. Your thoughts on Baltimore, and then we'll get well, we'll get to Stat Boy's uh, division predictions. Well, uh, I, I think the gold standard for a team that just comes out of nowhere and just does incredible the next year is the 1991 Atlanta Braves. Yes, absolutely. Be as bad as they were for years, <coughs> and then just then to make it to the seventh game of the World Series the next year. And they showed, you know, after that, it was not a fluke. You know, they had staying power. And obviously, yeah, they won the division won title, what, 13, 14 years. straight years? And then, you know, win all those divisions. So, but yeah, the, the well, 91 Braves. Another quick, we were, we were talking Braves. about the Braves earlier tonight. We were talking about most entertaining ejections. Who is the more entertaining ejection, Bobby Cox or Earl Weaver? <laughs> Earl Weaver, by far. Yes, yes, Earl yes. Earl Weaver. All right, continue. They have the record, but Earl Weaver. I mean, there were there was uh, there were theatrics to his ejections. He was the Daniel Day Lewis of ejections. (laughs) I could watch an entire. I could watch. I could watch Earl Weaver ejections all night long. I could say the same for Bobby Cox. Okay. No one ever had any memorable ejections like Earl Weaver had. <laughs> Earl Weaver got ejected. Man, it was it was. You big jerk! You big jerk! <laughs> and also loved it, you know, when he when he would uh, throw the umpires out of the game. He yeah. Would <laughs> okay. That, I guess that all ties back into Baltimore. Um, yeah, Baltimore last year. Wow. And of course, you know that. <laughs> They ran to the Rangers in the playoffs. And uh, I guess you could say their uh, playoff and experience showed. But I'm really high on Baltimore this year. I really think that they got the pieces to make the, the World Series and getting Corbin Burns from the Brewers in the offseason. Yep. You know what he did today on opening on, on, their, on, their, on their opening day game. The Brewers in the last calendar year have lost their four best pitchers. Hayter, Williams, Byrne, and Woodruff. 
yeah. to injury, trade, whatever. Brewers are fucked. <laughs> I, 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 I hate to say it. I love you, Bob Euchre. I'm going to listen to you to the day I die, but I think the Brewers are fucked. And I guess if there is a team, I guess them and the Mariners are probably the two teams that, you know, a lot of, I guess, neutral baseball fans are, are, are wishing would, would, would win a World Series. Because the Brewers have never won a World Series either, and the Mariners have never been in a World Series. I think it's the curse of Bud Selig. <laughs> I guess. It has to be something. Anyway, all right, stat boy. Sorry to interrupt. I, I, we have we, we got a Buck is like our baseball oracle. Sorry to interrupt you. Okay, your 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 MLB division predictions. Uh, I'm actually writing them down here on the mini stat board nine thousand. So the mini the, stat board nine thousand. The mini stat board nine thousand, and you'll see you'll you'll see it's going to be a very. Uh, <laughs> Stat Boy joined us back in early January calling playoff games with us and the Rumble. Stat Boy has become probably my favorite addition to the Raw Ball crew. Thank you, uh, sir. I appreciate that. Because I, I, I love doing stuff with Stat Boy because I will do shit or I will say shit that will crack him up and he is so always on top of his game that he will laugh it off really quick. And then get right back. I'm always trying to fuck with with Stat Boy. <laughs> it's like, how could I? How could how could I throw him off his game? How can I do a, a, a Doctor Johnny Fever? Just a quick little one liner and see how much I can throw him off his game. <laughs> well, I think you did pretty good. <laughs> trying to keep my. We did this. Ex- Okay, AL East Yankees, AL Central Twins, AL West Rangers, AL Wild Card Mariners, NL East Braves, NL Central Cubs. Ooh, okay. Dodgers, Padres. I think the Padres are snake bit. I think they are incapable of getting out of their own way. I have the Giants uh, finishing second in that division, and so does Maddie. I, I just, I, I, with the lineup that team had last year. This is almost like a, how can you fuck this up? And they managed to. Yep. I I said a year ago when I was looking at the Padres starting lineup, you know, for opening day, I was like, this has got to be the greatest lineup I've ever seen in 20 years. Like one through five at least. How do you screw this up? They padrate it. <laughs> That's a good one looking at it. Yes, yes. They padrate. Yes. By Why do you think the biggest disappointment uh, of last season by far? Nobody else comes close. Oh, not not even, not even remotely close. Step boy, wh- where I know you're a West Coast guy. I love the West Coast. I lived there for a while. Why? Where is this faith in the Padres? How and why should we believe this? <laughs> I believe that L.A. San Diego is a bigger rivalry than L.A. San Francisco because I'm right in. I was you forget right in both those teams used to be in New York, Brooklyn Dodgers, New York yeah. Giants. Like this rivalry goes back to like Red Barber, Vin Scully. This rivalry goes a long way back because I'm, I'm Southern California. I'm not Northern California, so. As much as I can admit to the fact that the Dodgers Giants has been the one of the biggest rivalries in baseball, only second to Dodgers Angels because of the crosstown rivalry, I gotta go with San Diego because I've I've been to San Diego many times. So I, 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 I me, I make I one of my most favorite vacations I've ever had in my life was a vacation out in San. I went deep sea fishing off the Pacific coast. Yeah. It was wonderful. I went to Ho Dad's, had the greatest burger I've ever had in my life. I love San Diego. The so baseball great. team, not, you know, they're kind of, but, you know. <laughs> I mean, and note, I don't put my angels anywhere on this list. I'm sorry. Unless I'm, unless unless the big man upstairs wants to play play uh, literal angels in the outfield, it ain't happening. 
I was about to say, the only way the Angels are making the playoffs are if Christopher Lloyd somehow is Al and there literally are Angels in the outfield and Matthew McConaughey is playing center field. That's about the only... I mean... And last I heard, Hollywood has him a little bit booked up. I mean, what are we I'm, going I'm still, on here? It's the end still, of the six and it's tied two to two. I'm, I'm still uh, ripping the Band-Aid off of Otani, okay? I'm sorry. He was the greatest thing to come to Anaheim since And my tra- Artie Moreno fucked it up. Artie Moreno is still screwing up the team name. He will never give that up. I'm sorry. That one I will never let go. You know, I I quoted Major League earlier. If we were to do another Major League this year, or in this episode, it would be, I hate this fucking song. That is Artie Moreno. Oh, yeah. The... And when Tree was on, we, we, I don't know if you were, yeah, you were here. I was saying the, the owner for the Pittsburgh Pirates is such a schmuck. It, we, we have such a disparity. Well, actually, I, me being a student of the game, thank you, Buck. I, I, just having you on screen reminded me and the books you've recommended to me, thinking of schmuck owners that we've had in Major League Baseball over the last 120-something years. But damn it all, we've got some schmucks. Not not unlike, you know, Comiskey level, not, you know, uh, not, you know, Colonel for the Yankees, not, you know, we've got some schmuck owners. <laughs> damn, they are, they are trying really hard. Uh, whatever happened to owners like Finley, who actually, you know, meddled but made it at least entertaining. Moreno doesn't even do that. <laughs> at least Finley introduced orange balls and paid his players to grow crazy mustaches. You know, we got some fun out of that. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's something else you don't see anymore. We don't have the colorful owners like we used to have, like Finley, Bill Beck, and... Even no. even goddamn Steinbrenner, even Steinbrenner. At, at, at some even point was entertaining. Yes, like he was he was a schmuck, but he was entertaining. Yes, Charles Comiskey was a rat bastard asshole, but yeah. it's like Jesus. Bud Selig owned the Brewers. I, we, it's like we've got really good owners, and then we've got just I don't. Second cousins to Charles Ponzi. <laughs> I, used, I used to say I had a I had a job one time where their whole their whole preaching was teamwork and teamwork. And I said, I remember I, I was so fed up with their bullshit. In one meeting, I said, "Well, as my mentor Charles Ponzi once said, teamwork helps the scheme work." <laughs> and I got uh, asked to leave the the meeting. Anywho. <clears throat> So we got your AL predictions, Stat Boy, NL predictions. Mm-hmm. What's next? Your your NL predictions. That's what we we got. Your AL. It's top oh, of the seventh. Put, one out. Swanson is up to bat for the Cubbies. I put all eight on here. Braves, Cubs, Swanson. Padres. You did? Yeah, all eight were on the same board. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Swanson grounds out to third. Braves, all right, Cubs, so yeah. We, we all right, so Cubs. so what are your your playoff? Who who are your playoff? Who who are the? Oh, oh. Uh, that's what we're needing. Your playoff teams. Uh, you mean like like who's going to play in the World Series finally? Yeah, who who are your your? We got your division winners. Uh, we need your wild cards, and then who are going to be? You know. What's your your World Series, or at least you know maybe even your ALCS and LCS? Oh, okay. Um, Bush is up to bat. One strike, actually two strikes, two balls. That that's gonna be a tough one, man. I I mean, Spores is on the mound. Is that the right way to pronounce? Is it Spores? Spores. 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 Yeah. He was the one that got the final out in the World Series. 
Makes uh, me think of Egon Spangler from the Ghostbusters. I collect spores, molds, and fungus. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Um, I may be a young man, but I'm an old soul. <laughs> I'll just go straight to the straight to the end. Uh, okay. Based off of, based off of my my division champions and and uh, and the eight and the play, I I would want to see. Uh, I want to see Rangers Dodgers. That's the one I'd be happy with. Give the Dodgers another chance at another World Series because they've already got the seven. Let them get their eighth, and then I would have no problem with Texas going back to back. Like the way you think. Because Tex- Texas has a better than average chance of uh, making it. Um, Maddie just told me he just suffered a Wi-Fi outage. Oh, so no. I it is going to be myself, unless his Wi-Fi comes back, me running this for the next, uh, until 10 p.m. Central Time. So I've got this for the next hour and a half. So Cap is Cap hey, you, so you got me to the end of the game. No problem. I got, I got this. Oh, well, thank you very much. But please stay around as long as you are able. Uh, it is... I'm so happy to have Buck on my show. Anytime it's like my baseball oracle, my godfather. It's like the ring that I kiss when it comes to the greatest game on planet Earth. It's like I get to have Buck on my show while we're doing MLB opening. I'm. It's. it's I'm glad it's, you're making this a tradition now. Well, yeah, it's it's our it's our charity stream, but also it's MLB opening day, and also we do MLB Sunday Night Baseball. This year, uh, we're going to be doing Sunday night baseball every Sunday night, uh, ESPN. If you happen to want to hop in with us on any Sunday night, if you have, I'm, I'm not sure what your Sunday night schedule looks like. Uh, we, we used to be a three man team on Sunday night baseball. We lost one guy, uh, for reasons I will not acknowledge, but, uh, if you would like to become our third Man in the booth for Sunday night baseball. Uh, there is a job open, and if I get to call Sunday night baseball with Buck Ringold, that just that that is, hey, <laughs> that, that's like <laughs> me being Cosell getting to call games with call games with Dandy Don and Frank Gifford. <laughs> oh ho! Hit to the corner. That's a ground rule double. Yes, that is. So I've, I've got I've got you guys in one ear, and then I've got the Rangers broadcast, the Rangers radio in the other ears, and then I've got the game cast on the ESPN here. Well, here's a question for Mister Buck, if I may. What please? Your, what's your like unofficial stadium rules when you're in when you're watching a game? Like, what do you like and what do you don't like? You're at the stadium, you know, you're there. What makes you happy and what doesn't? Well, when I'm at the stadium watching a ball game, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, I guess just being there really makes me the happiest, just being at a major league ball game. Gotcha. Uh, whether it's the Rangers, whether it's anybody else, you know, um, just just the thrill of being in a big league ballpark. That, that, that just gets me every time. Right. And, I, and it's something I never take for granted. I, I even when I go to watch the the Naturals seven miles up the road, uh, it's I, I'm blessed. It, it's like I'm I'm sitting. I paid seven bucks for a ticket. I'm paying two dollars for cheap beer. You know, dollar fifty two bucks for a hot dog. I'm sitting there and on the third baseline, my favorite spot to sit for a game, and I'm watching these guys who you know. One, two, maybe three of them are going to make it to the show. Uh, others, maybe not. But it's it's blessed. It's overwhelming. Like it's as Susan Sarandon said, the Church of Baseball. Indeed, indeed. Anyway, and on, continue. The opposite, what what upsets you the most? Well, I, I think just a pet peeve of mine is. Um, you know, uh, people getting up in the middle of a game, especially if it's a big situation, right? Uh, uh, to go to the concession stand. 
There you go. You know, I mean, yeah. if, you go, if you have to go to the restroom, I understand. You got to go, you got to go. If you got to go, you got to go. But uh, all of a sudden you're like, oh, man, I need to get a beer. I didn't get one when I got to the stadium. You know, I didn't really get the beer. <laughs> and then you got to, you know, especially if there are like three seats down from you and, and you got to get up, you got to, Get get you gotta get move up, to let them move, move, move get, let them through and all that, and then they come back and you gotta you know let them through again. Yeah, yeah I just that just drives me nuts. That's just that, that's why whenever I go to the concession stand, if I'm going to a Nationals game, and it, I am not a Royals fan, they're my division rivals, but goddamn, I love their minor league team. I love that stadium. Oh yeah, it's a great stadium. Uh, I, I I I I have had so many great times at that at that ballpark. Whenever I go to the concession stand, I get two tall beers, and I, I try to time my exits, whether it be restroom or con- I try to do it in between, you know, in between innings, uh, because I, I, I don't want to miss it. I, I love again, like my favorite spot on a field is <clears throat> on the third baseline where I can see the infield and just. And I, it could be me being left-handed. I love the yeah. third baseline as opposed to the first baseline. I don't know what it is, um, but sitting on the third baseline and just watching the intricacies of everything go on—it's it's as if they sift in magic waters. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a upper deck center field guy, but not out in center field. I'm, I'm I, I like I'm, third baseline. As close as I can get, not like right on third base, but like say, I know the, the camera kind of. So if here's third base, I like to be about here and then a little bit up. Just it gives. And again, it, I'm left-handed and my right eye is not so good. Right, I, I wear glasses, but that's just kind of how I see the field the best. Um, everybody's yeah. different. I mean, I, I like to get that. I like to get that 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 arc look. So I can t- I can look at the ball. I'm like, okay, that one's gone. There's no way it's going to happen. When I w- when I went to Angel Stadium, you know, I had to be beautiful sitting. park. Absolutely. You Too bad to there's be- not beautiful baseball going on there. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, you can you can actually look out of the stadium from a from about the three hundreds. You can see the halo. You can see the freeway. You can see the rocks. Luckily, it's gorgeous. Can. It's absolutely it beautiful. It absolutely is. You know that that's why I, I like that vicinity. I I've tried s- sitting as close out to right field, didn't get the same the same uh, thing. You know, plus the sun was in my eyes. Hated that part. When I went to Dodger Stadium, I I, I was just al- along the first base line, and, I, and you know I, I I I love it. Also with me, once I'm in my seat, I'm in my seat. I don't move. Yep. Um, I, I don't move unless a better seat frees right. up. But even then, it has to be like late in the for me to 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 do the to do the move as I call it to do the the succession. Right. Um, it's got to be at least post seventh inning stretch. Like my, my I, I again I went to a Naturals game with a, a buddy of mine who was actually. Uh, Buck knows him, Jared Souza, drafted by the Yankees. Um, we were there on office tickets, and it was like, you know, well, how long do we have to say, like, well, okay, an official game is four and two thirds innings. So if after that we have to leave, you know, we can say, fuck you, you know, we stayed for the whole game. Right. <laughs> and and we stayed, you know, there in the in the box that the office had reserved. Then we meandered down, you know, to this spot. And by the time we got to the seventh inning, we were on the the patio, uh, just, you know, shooting the shit and whatever. And I, I, I like to meander about every third of the game if I can. Like, if I have gotcha. a I, – I like my third baseline seat, but, you know, if I'm with friends or whatever and we just want to kind of walk around, I, I'll i do that. But uh, – yeah, I, I try to I try to make sure my meanderings are appropriately timed. It is still two to two, bottom of the seventh. Oh, I, like, I, I also I like to oh, I have the, 
the, the okay. pre-meal or the post-meal, I'm not really eating during the game. Me, me either. I, I will, I will always have at least one hot dog. It, it's just, I, I go to a baseball game. I gotta have a dog with mustard and onion there you to go. go with my first beer. I, I gotta have at least a dog. If, right. if, if I go, if I go to a game, I gotta have a dog. Um, if I really just need something to nibble on, I'll get peanuts. Oh yeah. Uh, but other than that, I don't really eat at games. I'll either eat before or after. But I'll always have a dog, and if I just really feel the munchies, just I'll just get a bag of peanuts. Exactly, because around Angel Stadium on, if I remember it, it's... Two outs to Varus at bat. It's uh, Catella Avenue and State College Boulevard. Genius to put a Carl's Jr. and a Denny's right across the street from the stadium after you clear the parking lot. So if you want a superstar you, after the game, go there. Me, I got... I I almost broke my cardinal rule is that ball gone no yep he flew out that was a close one that Boy, was, that was close, close. close i got lucky i i think i might have left just before the last out i raced over to the denny's i had so simeon is up two outs two strikes to him already had to have a grand two slam. splitters 20 minutes later that now empty denny's was just full of eight and I'm Angel fans. I'm like, boy, I'm glad, I'm glad my pancakes are on the well, table. I'll tell you but that. Damn it, how many times have we gone to Denny's in the wee hours of the morning, just you and I and James Parks, just to, to shoot the shit on, on any number of sports? I mean, if, you, if you're at Denny's at 2 o'clock in the morning and you get a Grand Slam special sitting in front of you, and you're hanging with your buddies. I mean, does life really get any better than that? <laughs> that was, I, I remember when I helped you move, remember when you were moved from one apartment to another, you took us out to Denny's, me and James for helping you move. Uh, we got you moved into your new place. Then you took us out to Denny's uh, for dinner that night. And we just sat and talked baseball for two, three as Cubs do up top of the eighth. Well, I eat a Grand Slam any time of the day, so there you go. Well, hey, if, if you put pancakes, eggs, bacon, sausage in front of me, whether I'm 12 beers deep or zero beers deep, I'm going to be enjoying that son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Buck, how are I, – I, uh, well, we've got a little break in the game here. How are things going with SB Live? What's going on with uh, – I know it's you've been with them now for a year and a half, two years. Uh, it's been uh, it'll be uh, three years. Come three October. years, three years. Three okay. Years. Uh, how 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 are things going? I mean, I, I keep track a little bit through through Twitter. Uh, I, I know you, you are on the road. You, you have become Jack Jack Kerouac. <laughs> you are on the road more than ever, but but I love that for you because. As, as, as Hunter Thompson once said, he called himself a road man. You are a road man. Definitely and, a road man. I and, up, uh, a few and, and I see you on Facebook, like all the restaurants you're going to. It's like, yeah. God damn it. Why am I not a college student again? And I'm just like hanging with Buck for a week, just see, like hitting see, uh, different. I, I was 20 years younger doing this. <laughs> um, I wish I were 20 years younger doing this. <laughs> I went over. I, I, I went on the road for more than seventeen thousand miles. Seventeen thousand miles in 17, one year. Seventeen thousand miles on on work related trips last year. Holy jumping Jesus! Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I we're, we're friends on Facebook, so I, I and Facebook is one of the I I'm on Facebook all day, just you know checking with friends, and and I see everything going on, and it's like, damn it. Buck is, I correct me if I'm wrong here. Correct me if I'm wrong. I feel like you are getting to do now what you wish you could have been doing. Exactly. Back exactly. in the day when yes. I was exactly you know, your your your, exactly. your apprentice, your understudy, kind of learning exactly. the journalism business. Exactly. Yeah, I, this has been a dream. This has been beyond a dream come true. Um, I, I I couldn't be happier for you. It's it, it, it's. This is this is just the perfect situation for me. I, I'm I'm just 
totally, totally thankful, grateful to be part of this company and to do all these great things, you know, go to New Orleans one weekend, go to Dallas another weekend. It's just, it's, it's just awesome. So I, I know the, uh, we're both old school wrestling fans. We understand, you know, the territory system, you know, back in the old day, you know, you had a territory that hit, you know, half dozen towns in a week. Right. We had sort of our territory, Eastern Oklahoma. Yes. Uh, we do our hot spots food wise. Yes. In all the travels you've been making, if, if there was some way to sort of transport our duo back in time, what are the one or two restaurants that you're like, Brandon's got to go and have this food at this, what are the one or two that you'd be like, Brandon's got to go on this trip? Well, you've got to go to Ville Platte, Louisiana and go to this Cajun buffet place. I'm running this down here because I, I know you, you worked in Ville Platte. Yes. Is, yes. Is, is this the same buffet that the Rotarians or whatever? Uh, no. Different, <laughs> menu. different. different okay. menu. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm running this down. I have my pen. I, I saw, I heard Ville Platt. I was like, wait a minute. God damn it. Wasn't there like a. Uh, that, uh, that, 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 that's part of it too, because I used to work down there in, in the place. Yeah. I, I went down this place. The Rotarians are an odd bunch. <laughs> no, no. That was a different place. Uh, where, where they had the rotary meeting. So this is... Uh, In half up to seven pitches. This is <laughs> on deck. Cajun buffet, everything you want, shrimp, catfish, crawfish etouffee, you name oh, it. Oh, yeah. You name it. It's all there. And now, save some room for dessert. They got this incredible banana pudding that is out of this world. Oh, my God. I love me some So be food. sure and save some room for the banana pudding. Uh, in case you hadn't noticed, uh, Buck, uh, I am engaged and getting married this summer. Congratulations to you. Well, I'm, fi I'm uh, finally what's, what's uh, like? getting getting married. And uh, let me just say, they know their Southern Cajun Creole cooking. Um, shrimp and grits. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, crawfish at your face. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, chicken yeah. and dumplings. Chicken oh, my and God. Gumbo. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, I am so happy that I'm getting married and that. So it, let's just say between, the, between my cooking and their cooking, um, no worries. <laughs> so is she from Louisiana or have relatives that live? Columbus, Mississippi. Oh, Mississippi. Okay, okay. But uh, actually grew up, was raised in London. And then the, uh, dad was in the Air Force. And then spent some time in Texas, Oklahoma. Okay. But settled in oh, yeah. uh, the Mississippi Delta. Okay. okay. Uh, so I get a good amount of nice Cajun Creole and... and and I will say this, Buck. I wish we lived closer. My jambalaya, not trying to toot my own horn here. My chicken <laughs> sauce is jambalaya. Knock you, knock your socks off. Oh. Uh, I, I've been perfecting my jambalaya. Uh, my jambalaya will will kill you, in a good way. But yes, uh, Cap is getting married this summer, and they know how to oh. cook the southern. Oh, oh man! Oh, good, 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 good. <laughs> uh, I, I, st I, I go to work. I work from home now, uh, but I start work every morning at six thirty a.m. and uh, brings me breakfast every morning uh, around eight or eight o'clock or so. And it's either grits and eggs and cat head biscuits or. Uh, oh, Creole man. tacos, oh, or uh, oh, oh my god, oh my gosh, oh, oh love it. Wow, I, I hit the right spot with you then talking about Cajun food. Hey, we got where, some good where, 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 where were we? Bill Platt, Cajun buffet. I'm getting married. What's 
If you can mix Cajun and Haps up to bat. <laughs> you can if you can throw something that's Cajun and smoked. Hey, you got the best of both worlds in Sevier County, Tennessee. Thank you very much. The, the best. Uh, this is no shit. The best fried chicken I've ever had. Prince's Fried Chicken in Nashville. Um, I went when I was still working my original podcast, uh, The Wrestle Ball with John Rice. Um, we did our one year anniversary in Nashville where he lived and okay, okay. made a weekend of it. And uh, we went to Prince's Fried Chicken and we went to a barbecue restaurant there in Nashville. Uh, barbecue was pretty damn good, but Prince's Fried Chicken, I mean. Now, is that is that the hot chicken or just regular fried chicken? Hot. Nashville hot fried. Okay. Uh, oh, 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 oh. oh, oh. We were in Las Vegas. Me and my wife were in Las Vegas uh, around the holidays last Top of the eighth, two outs, Suzuki's at bat. Go ahead, And Bob. we went to this. Uh, <coughs> they got them in Nashville, too. It's called Hattie B's. Yes, Hattie B's. That's hot another chicken. good one. So they, they had it there in Las Vegas. We tried it. It was very good. Very good. So you said the Villepoix Cajun <laughs> Buffet. What's the name of this place? Uh, Cajun Catfish. Cajun Catfish Buffet. Okay. It's like it's like five miles out of Ville. It's not in town. It's like five miles out of town. <clears throat> and no Rotarians. No, <laughs> no Rotarians. At least I don't think the Rotary is met there. <laughs> And what would the other one be uh, of all the places that I've missed out on? Uh, okay, I'm, I'm going to try to do some thinking here. Okay, um, do some oh. thinking. It's a two and one count. So <laughs> Bellinger makes that two and two. Two and two count to Bellinger from Yates. This could be going to extra innings, folks. Hey, more time could for be. us to be on the air. <laughs> Three and two count to Bellinger. Splitter at 86. Okay, I'm subject to Cajun food. It's a chain. They have them in Texas. Okay. Uh, da- da- in the Dallas area. Uh, it's called Razoos. Razoos, okay. R A Z Z O O S, apostrophe S. All right. And, it, and it's a local chain, but it's it's very good. Very good Cajun. Very good Cajun. Um, you're very familiar with Kansas City. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, obviously, no need to mention Arthur Bryant's. Gates. Oh. Yeah, Arthur oh. Bryant's and Gates. That's, that's, that's. Um, a great place. I don't know if you've ever been to <laughs> uh, I, I took a vacation a few years ago uh, to Kansas City. I was, it was, I was following one of my favorite bands around the country. Um Grateful Dead style. Uh, okay. And the first stop was Kansas City. Okay. Uh, and I found maybe the greatest sports bar in America that I never hear anybody talk about. It's the Tower Tavern in Kansas City, Missouri. The Tower uh, Tavern. The Tower Tavern in Kansas City, Missouri. If you've never been there, please go there. The food is great. The people are awesome. It, it's a wonderful environment. I went in there on a Sunday in my Raider gear, nobody messed with me. No cat calls, no whatever, n- nothing. I just I, I sat at my table with my laptop because it was you know fantasy football. Yeah, wait staff. The food was del- I mean, phenomenal. Uh, better than when I went to Red Rocks in Denver wearing the same Raiders gear and got accosted by a few Broncos fans. Uh, Another story, another time. Uh, but yeah, Kansas City, the Tower Tavern, go there, folks. It, it it is of all the. I've been to a lot of sports bars. I've been to a lot of bars. Tower Tavern, Kansas City, phenomenal. It is the bottom of the eighth. No outs. Texas is coming up to bat. Looks like it will be Seager. I've got the radio feed in one ear. I've got the uh, game cast uh, in the other. Oh, part of the order. Part of the order coming up for the Rangers. Yeah. So. Two, three, four. Oh, that's. Uh, yep, they got a Garcia has already homered. Yep. 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 He can, he can hit another one out, too. 
I remember my, my first ever major league game was a Texas Rangers game. It was at the old uh, ballpark in Arlington. Uh, Kevin Millwood was the starting pitcher. It was Nelson Cruz's major league debut. He had just gotten called up from AAA. He had his first major league home run that night. Um, got to watch Millwood pitch a great game. Um, I was unprepared for Texas weather in July. Um, <laughs> I was wearing jeans and a because I always wear long sleeves. It's just it, so I was I was sweating incredibly, and there was a a gentleman in the section, say from where my party was, say four or five seats down. I'm not sure if he had too many dogs, too many beers, or a combination of the both. Well, this gentleman hard. was a one-man Oppenheimer. Okay. Gas was being passed. Oh. <laughs> and it just so happened that the wind, and we were on the, th- like, not quite the third base, like, like, like sort of like midway between third base and home plate, but a little more towards home plate. The wind was wafting. <laughs> in just the inappropriate direction to where myself, my friends, and other people, you could see the, you know, yeah, the the motions. Yeah. This this gentleman was uh, he was dropping dropping bombs and. But it also was Mark Teixeira uh, bobblehead night. And I got a Mark Teixeira bobblehead. (laughs) Mark Teixeira bobblehead, first Major League Baseball game, and damn near died of oxygen asphyxiation. (laughs) Or oxygen deprivation. Seager singles to right. He is on first, bottom of the eighth, one out. Young up to bat. Young is... This, wait, 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 Fielder's Choice, runner out, Young into Fielder's Choice, Seager to second, Garcia up That's to the bat. two bases, right? That's the two bases he wanted. Yep. Yep. Garcia up, one out, man in scoring position. Garcia could do it again. And I will never forget Maddie Easter, and I will never forget Easter Sunday, 2007. You were driving... It was uh, Rangers and Red Sox, and it was the night Ortiz hit two into the right field porch at Old Ballpark in Arlington. Uh, and I was I was losing my absolute shit that night. Garcia two for three with a home run and an RBI. Ball on the strike to him. There's another ball, two and one count to Adolis. Haas, what, what are your... I'm curious as to your thoughts on uh, on Adolis Garcia. I I'm sort of mixed on him, to be honest. I, I I can't tell if he's a really good player or just a decent player. Like because he he's shown flashes of both. And there's another strike, so it is two and two to Adolis. Uh, Buck, what are your thoughts on Adolis Garcia? Well, I, I think he's one of those proverbial. Um, if he's not on your team, you kind of have a tendency to, to hate him or dislike him. But if he's on your team, you're glad to have him on your team. Well, I, I, I don't just, I mean, he's not on my, I, I, I like him personally. Uh, I, I think he's a damn good baseball player. Yeah. I just, I, I have these, when I'm trying to, okay, is, is he sort of an upper echelon player or is he just mediocre? I, Yes, I, I would, would love say, it if he were a white I, sock, I, I but he's not. Say he's one of those. He lives for the big moment uh, type of players. You know, he he, he may he may be the uh, uh, a player that like Garcia is out in the middle, in the middle of June. <coughs> he may be in a slump, you know, but come come the big game like pennant race or like say like what we saw yeah. in the postseason. He turns it on to another level. He's just well, this is guys. the next guy I wanted to ask you about. Uh, Adolis is out, two outs, bottom of the eighth. Wyatt Langford. I have not been this excited about a prospect in baseball in a long time. 
This kid, as I said earlier in our show before you joined, I said, this kid is a bitch with a stick. This kid can hit. Yes. He does other things well too, but this kid can hit. What, as a Ranger fan, I, I know you follow the minor leagues just like I do. Wyatt Langford, tell yes. me about him. Talk to me. Wow. Just a, a rapid ascent through the minors. And I mean, less than a year after uh, being drafted and playing in a College World Series for Florida, playing in the finals with College World Series, he's on an, he's on an opening day roster. Not yeah. too many people can say that. Not like yeah, the, the that, first yeah, season that. in the Rangers where they had that high school kid at 18 years pitching opening David day. David Clyde. David Clyde. God. Oh, poor kid. Yeah. Yeah. Th- and, th- and, this guy's a little bit better. I, 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 I like me some. I drafted him on my fantasy team. I like Wyatt Langford. This kid has got something. I don't know what it is. He's got something. He's got, but you've been watching baseball a lot longer than I have. What do you see in this kid? Uh, looks like he actually uh, got. Looks like Heim is up. Okay, two on, two outs. Two on, yeah. Langford got on. Um, well, he. I mean, the the Rangers lineup was already formidable as it was. And then to have a, a kid like Langford just jump in like that, I mean, that just makes the offense even more dangerous. What is your is your comp for for Wyatt Langford in whether it be the Rangers organization, others uh, other baseball organizations? Because uh, because you 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 know you've watched baseball for years, you know watching these guys come up. Yep. What would be your comp? for Wyatt Langford that the average baseball fan could because okay Wyatt Langford reminds you of insert name that is the end of the well, eighth you know I mean you could you could say like a, a, a Mike Cubs coming Trout. out top of the ninth go ahead Buck you know maybe a Mike Trout type I wouldn't go that far just yet but <coughs> I know I just got new glasses yeah, you're 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 dropping. <laughs> track. But but yeah, you know, um, and I'm being cautiously optimistic. You know, I don't want to. I mean, Langford's got a good much. glove. I'm, I'm not. I mean, Trout, Trout yeah. is to me the most complete player yeah. we've seen yeah. in the last quarter century as far as yeah. defense, offense, everything. Langford's got a good glove. But you, yeah. Are, are you putting him in trout level glove territory well, as well as? I, I would say as far as the offense goes. Okay. okay. Now trout by far is the is the more complete player with that. Okay. That, that is you know that's that's a given. All right. You know, I, I no way am I saying no way am I saying White Langford's better than Mike Trout. That is not the case. Okay. 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 But, but I would say offensively, he's got a chance. To, to, to do what Trout's been able to do on a, on a consistent basis. At the play, at He's the got the bat. Yeah. Um, what what about as far as the, the third aspect of the uh, speed on the base paths? Uh, Langford and, and the projections I've seen from, from various different sources this year, because I drafted him, I love him, I've seen anywhere from 8 to 15 stolen bases. Do you – are you more on the higher end of that, the lower end of that, uh – Base stealing has increased uh, the last year with the bases getting, you know, larger. Are right. you seeing him on the higher end of that or the lower end? I mean, just I would say somewhere in the middle. Somewhere in the middle. Yeah, uh, I've seen even from eight to fifteen. So you're saying somewhere around twelve. Yeah, that that, 12, that, that, would, stolen be my, bases. that would be my projection. Yeah. Okay, uh, Stat Boy, to for a it's for a comp on this. The Angels organization, obviously, Otani's gone. You still have Trout. Who is a hitter or, 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 you know, someone who's coming up in the Angels organization that we as fans should look forward to? Because I, I, I've looked far and wide, and I haven't really seen or heard of a member of the Angels organization 
this year that, oh, pay attention to this guy. The only one that comes Is there to someone that the experts are overlooking? Anthony Rendon. Oh, for Christ's sake. No, no, no. <laughs> hey, he's, he's... Weeping gotta... Jesus on the cross with Mary Magdalene at his hey, feet. There, Anthony goddamn else. Rendon. He, I wouldn't... I wouldn't sleep on him. He... I'm not just sleeping. I'm taping. I, I, I am taking a, a Rip Van Winkle on Anthony Rendon. He's publicly said he sees baseball. He's like, eh, eh, eh. Unless the Angels get some miracle players before the trade deadline, I don't see them being any more dominant because they can't put anything more on Trout. They, they and they can't replace three and two to Morell. There is no strike way. three called. He is out. There is no way you can replace Otani San. I'm sorry. So this well, is Well, and Artie Moreno should have paid him. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, he, he switched sides, which like I said, I'm still ripping the band. I'm still ripping the bandaid off of that one. He's he he got his first hit as a Dodger today, but you know I'm going to stay true to my team. But I, my hopes are just fleeting and fleeting and fleeting. So unless there is some miracle, you know, if, if Trout goes, then that's it. That's it. You'll you'll never see. So I have beer. a I have approximately to my left. 15 empty beer cans since this program began. Wow. And I feel like I am more sober and more coherent than you thinking that there is something that the angels are able to coddle together. Cause I'm sick. I'm also sick and tired of hearing about, Oh, this is a rebuilding. Um, at some point you have to finish. As long as party. Artie Moreno owns the team, this is a rebuilding. You, you can't you, you can't polish shit. I'm sorry. You can't shine shit. No, I'm you sorry. can't shine shit. Trust me. I've tried. That's my uh, first wife. <laughs> you can't shine shit. <laughs> no, you can lie, you know? I, I will say there is, apart from Mike Trout, there is one guy I do like on the Rangers. Uh, no, pardon me, not the Rangers. The mm-hmm. Angels line up this year, and that's Taylor Ward. Okay, I, can I, give you Taylor I Ward. do. I do like Taylor Ward. I think he is. How, I want to make sure I phrase this correctly. Not a great player, but I think as far as the stick goes, the lineup goes, I like Taylor Ward as being their second best bat next to Trout. It could happen, you know. It could happen. Swanson I, up to bat, top of the ninth, one out. Oh wow, I'm a whole batter behind. Then you're way ahead of me. Well, again, I, I've got, I've got the Rangers home broadcast in my left ear. I've got you guys in my right ear, and then I've got ESPN GameCast in front of me. I just got Bush just struck out, or no, he took a strike. So I've got it, I've got it uh, one and two. Top uh, top nine, two outs, pitch clock running down. Buck, that, that's another thing I wanted to ask you about. So I got top of the ninth, two outs. Bush is up. I've got a three and two count. He strikes out. Oh, actually, no, Bush walked. Oh, okay. Bush it's walked. Nico Horner is up to bat. I love Nico Horner. Nico Horner is one of my absolute favorite players in all of baseball. I fucking love Nico Horner. This guy does everything I love about a baseball player. So we are looking at uh, potentially extra innings here. Um, Buck, I wanted to get your thoughts because we didn't... Uh, get them last year in this particular show, the pitch count. I love it. 
the game it's has what? got to be sped up a bit. Like it, it, it was, it was, it was dragging. There is no reason for a major league baseball game to be going three and a half, four hours, apart from extra innings. I but agree. A, a, a pure ninth inning game should go two, two and a half, two and a half, yeah, maybe you know a little bit longer. I, I know commercials and things change things, but I love the pitch clock, and 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 it's not a rule. That is new. It's just a rule that is now right. being enforced. Yes. It's, it's not like it hasn't been around forever. It's just, okay, now, hey, there's a pitch clock. Enforce it. Don't let these guys take these 30 second. You know, exactly. Between every bat. The generations at the plate, you know, yeah. idiosyncrasies and. and it's like, all Jesus that. Christ, the Pope could get a, an entire mass out in Latin. In the time you guys take to readjust your batting gloves. No, I, I'm with you. The pitch clock is a godsend. It, it, it's tremendous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank yes. you. Yes. I learned from the best, and the best agrees with me. Thank God. Now, what's Porter your opinion still... on the ghost runner at second to start an extra inning? Absolute unconstitutional bullshit. <laughs> I'm over, I'm over it. I'm, I'm with you all the way there too. Fuck I'm the ghost there. runner. Love the pitch no. clock. You got. I mean, yeah. No, no. You got to uh, uh, corner at three and two count. I was part. I, I sat. In, I, I was part of the longest game in Rangers history. The eighteen inning game. Uh, the eighteen inning game against, against Baltimore. Eighteen innings. I was there for all eighteen innings. Wow. Strike three. Man, it, it was, there was drama, you know, every inning. Yep. So, no, I, I do not like the Ghost Runner at all. Not one bit. I don't like it. The Ghost I'm, Runner I'm, is like a Chicago hot dog. Pickles, tomatoes don't belong on a fucking hot dog. Definitely not. There, there, are, there are four ingredients allowed on a dog chili cheese onion and mustard get over it new york get over it chicago i'm sorry uh no ketchup no well as, as dirty harry said <laughs> i've seen what was that line in was it magnum force or something i've seen a lot of things in my life i've seen a lot of crazy shit but nobody, but nobody puts ketchup on a hot dog. Maybe. Mustard, onion, chili, cheese. Maybe, maybe some tomato relish if you're relish. just feeling I mean, you froggy. I mean, you got to have relish on a hot dog. I, I'll allow the... We just had our baseball draft last Saturday. I had a buffet. Everything from pickles to kraut to tomato relish, ketchup, mustard. I... I Everything you could put on a dog, I allowed for my guests. Because I'm not an asshole. It's your dog. Make it how you want. But me, chili, chili, cheese, onions, mustard. That's that, that's a dog. Uh, 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 real, real, real quick, you mentioned another place uh, to eat on the road. Edmond, Oklahoma. It's a Master place Master Boney. Called, it's a place Edmund called Oklahoma. The Mule. Edmond, Oklahoma, The Mule. The Mule. M-U-L-E. Get a super Reuben. Ooh, I don't like cool. Rubens. Okay. This one is a Reuben, but it also has a hamburger patty in it. I don't like Russian dressing. That's my I don't like Russian dressing <laughs> and I don't like kraut. I don't like sauerkraut. So I get my I, I get I get it without sauerkraut, okay? But man, that is so good. The super Reuben is so good. <sighs> you do they just score do they, do they just score a run? No, <clears throat> I've got runners on first and uh, well, maybe they have. Yep. That was a wild pitch. Wild pitch. Oh, yeah. We were on first and second just a second ago. Now I'm talking about a super Ruben, and before you know it, they score one. Holy cow! I might they win this game on a wild got, pitch. They got. They go from second on wild pitch. He sure did. Wow. Well, I'll be damned. Holy cow. We have a wild <laughs> pitch, ladies and gentlemen. And the guy scored from second. Ball so. got loose. 
Holy mackerel. Take a look at the replay. The so, ball is coming in. The catcher uh, stole the home catch on a goes wild off pitch. The catcher's leg. That's a legit play. That's a wild pitch. I was about to say, as far as diners go, uh, Buck, you still live in our old hometown of Fort Smith. Benson's Grill. Yes. <sighs> Two, three years ago, I was spending Christmas. Oh, strike uh, that. Down in... it, wasn't, it wasn't a wild pitch. It was a, a stealing home plate. Okay. Oh, so he stole. So he stole on the pitch, and then when it was wild, he, he broke. Okay, okay, that makes okay. Okay, yeah, I got it. Two or three Christmases ago, I was down in Fort Smith. I was staying at the Red Roof Inn just off Garrison Avenue. Know where that uh, is? With a lady friend of mine. Oh, not not your future wife, somebody else. No, no, different one. Okay. And it was about four or five o'clock in the morning after probably 30, 40 drinks, whatever. It was like, you know, Benson's Grill is open. They're just up the street. And every time I go to Benson's Grill, it is amazing. The omelet, the hash browns, the bacon, the toast, the sausage. It's a 24-hour diner. It's right next to Northside High School where my mother went to high school. God rest her soul. It is just... Uh, I'm a nostalgic. There is nothing better than a drunken night on Garrison Avenue in Fort Smith staying at a cheap hotel and then about two, three o'clock in the morning, you get the munchies and you just walk to Benson's. There, there's just plan. something. It, it, it's it's almost like a, a birthright, a heritage. It's middle of the night. Cubs are up three to two. Rangers are in danger of losing their home opener, uh, opening up their season after the World Series. Looks like Texas. Who is coming up in the ninth for Texas? Four. Okay, the heart of the order it'll be it'll be the the bottom the bottom half of the order. Uh, Heim, Duran, and Carter. Yeah, Duran is up. I didn't predict the Cubs winning this one, but I, I don't did. Know, they're, they're, Rangers could. I mean, they just need one to tie it up here. I think it's going to be uh, Duran, Carter, and Tavares. I believe you're. I believe you're right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Duran, Carter, Tavares. Seven, eight, nine. Yeah, seven, eight, nine. <laughs> Duran, is, Duran is one of three, and Carter is zero of three, and Tavares is zero of two. So it could. We'll see what happens here. Well, like I said, you know, don't count out the Ranger lineup. Hit, you know. There, there's no – everybody in the lineup can, can hit top to bottom. Duran's up. He's one for three with two strikeouts tonight. And they're, they're regular oh, wait, first base. Oh, wait, wait, wait. we got a pinch hitter. It's Jankowski. Jankowski. Jankowski is pinch hitting for Duran. Oh, Jankowski. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I'm still on he, commercials on, on ESPN. Jankowski but. is a very interesting young player. I like him. So we shall see here. Jankowski. Looks like we've got a 1-0 and count for Jankowski. Alzale, right-handed pitcher, pitching to Jankowski. It is two balls, 2-0 and count to Jankowski. Oh, we're getting into the thick of this one, Buck. Oh, yeah. That second pitch looks very. Can, can we have it any better? Opening night, we got Buckering Gold, and it's a we got a strike. Four seam fastball, ninety four, not quite right down the pike. It is two balls, one strike to Jankowski. Alzale Ooh. on the mound. Low three and one. Three and one to Jankowski. Alzale. Oh, wait a minute. They're running out of strike. Two and two. Oh, I'm a pitch behind. All right. Three and two. Full count. 
Full count to Jankowski. Oh, yeah, that, that, that could have been a ball. It should have been. Swung on high in the air. Suzuki back. Gone home run, Rangers! What I tell you? Jankowski, the pitch hitter, ties it up in the body of the ninth. Oh, Unbelievable, and I'm about to see it. As Stone Cold Steve Austin would say, Give me a hell yeah! <laughs> Holy smokes, that thing was lit! <laughs> <coughs> Holy moly Moses! Over the right field line, and it was gone. Bruce Bochy again managing... I, he knew it. He I can't. I can't. He knew it. I, I cannot sing the praises anymore for Bochi. Uh, the man, the man knows baseball. The man knows baseball. Uh, yeah, uh, much like uh, an old friend of ours, Wild Bill. Indeed, uh, indeed. I, I miss that old son of a bitch. Oh, oh, me too. Me too. If if you if you were to give you know if I had you know a magic lamp and I could rub it you know and a genie pops out and gives me three wishes, I would almost say one of them would be, can I have twenty four hours at or just in a in a press box just me Buck Ringgold and Wild Bill Talbot with like a buffet just you know oh, a, yeah. a, a a buffet of food plenty of beer whatever. And it's just the three of us for 24 hours. And I get to talk baseball with Wild Bill and Buck. <laughs> Carter up to bat. Two and one count. And talk about someone else that's had a charm life. Evan Carter. He, he's had a... He last year and be part of this run. <clears throat> Tavares coming up. Carter is on. There's Folks, don't run away. We are in the bottom of the ninth. No outs. It is a tie game. Carter is on, and Tavares is up to bat. Uh, <whistles> Carter gets walked. Yeah, let's not go extra innings. Let's have a walk-off right here. Tavares, the center fielder, up to bat. That means uh, no outs. So, we still got Simeon, Seeger, Young, and potentially Garcia, who is already homered tonight. But could just just escape opening night with a win. That would be good. That would be good. Not for me, it wouldn't. But hey. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Tavares is a damn good baseball player. He, the fact that he's batting ninth, don't let that deceive you. He is a damn good baseball player. It looks like it's ball one. Comes right to pull this off. I've got a, I've got a win on the day, and that's what I'm going. So for. my my audio feed of the actual game is a little bit ahead of ESPN. Yeah, we, we gotta work on that there, Captain. We gotta we gotta sync up somehow next time. That is strike one, bunted foul. Ninety three mile per hour fastball. Simeon on deck, Seeger in the hole. He's showing bunt. That's a very interesting strategy. I mean, you've got you've got no outs. You want the runner to advance. Strike two, slider, 86 mile an hour, fouled. Going for it again. Oh, okay, see. Buck, I dream for the day when you and I get to sit in a press box together and call a baseball game. If that ever happens, just once the game's over, just kill me. I got to call a game with Buck. Foul ball slider. It is a two and one, one and two count, or 
two strikes, one ball to Tavares. I would almost say swing away. I don't I don't really care for the squeeze blunt or the sacrifice blunt. I never did like it. Unless oh, I it, love it. it. I absolutely love a squeeze bunt. Get some swings deep to left field. In play, makes the catch. That is one out. Runner advanced. So we got a runner in scoring position. Tavares flies out. Simeon is up to bat. One out with a man in scoring position. Simeon 0 for 3 with two strikeouts tonight. This is a bit of a, uh, what you may call a pressure cooker for Simeon. No, runner did not advance. No, he stayed. No, no, he, no, he stayed, he runner did close. not advance? Nope. It That's wasn't deep enough. The game. Slider for a strike. Simeon 0 for 1. 0 and 1 count, I should say. Low and outside, ball one. <coughs> Seeger on deck, young in the hole. Throw to first. Carter back to first. Tried for a pickoff move there, it did not work. Comes the pitch. Simeon swings, lines one to right field. Makes the catch, throws back to first. And that is going to be the second out. Up comes Seeger. A it's man kind of on first. Yeah, you want. It's kind of the guy you want it there in that situation. Well, yeah. I mean, it's Corey goddamn Seeger. <laughs> And we've got a oh, we got radio double, timeout. We got, double, oh, we got doubled off. We're <laughs> not going to bat. He got doubled off. Wow. Wow. Oh, it's a double God. play, friends. We're going to extra innings. Oh, <laughs> boy. Well, gentlemen, you two keep this going for about 30 seconds. I got to relieve some ballast. Uh, I'll be right back in about 30 seconds. I got you, Captain. Don't worry. You got, you got to go. You got to go. Cubs and Rangers going into extra innings on opening day. It's 3-3. What a game it's been so far. Cubs came out early in the second inning, got the first run of the game. Texas then matches us up in the fourth inning. They each score one in the sixth. A wild ninth inning causing a, a, a double steal, essentially, because the ball went foul. The catcher decides, hey, I'm going to complain to the to the umpire. Umpire reminds him, "Hey, it's a live ball. Here comes the, here comes up, here comes the runner." And then uh, Texas says, "No, we're going to continue on, and we're going to hit a home run." And now we have extra baseball for the defending champions. Remember, in, uh, of course, in uh, extra inning in baseball, we have the ghost runner on second the base. Ghost runner. <laughs> yeah, bring him the in as fast as you can. Hit the ball deep. Could be game over in. Uh, in uh, one quick inning or or who knows what else. The trailer for this new uh, Bad Boys movie has come out. I can't believe they actually made a fourth Bad Boys movie, but hey, why not? And of course we get the Cadbury eggs. As I'm watching live here on ESPN, it's been a pretty good baseball Oy! day. Feel better, Captain? Oh, I feel five pounds lighter. There you go. Well, it is extra innings, it is opening night, it is the Rangers, it is their victory lap, and we've got the one and only Buck Ringgold and Stat Boy Mike. I could not imagine a better finish to tonight. I'm getting to call an extra innings game on opening night with Stat Boy and Buck. Oh, and holy mackerel. What's huh? the count? What's the beer count and the cigarette count? Uh, the cigarette count, undeterminable. Uh, the beer count... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Wow. I'm drinking tall boys. Uh, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
Nine, Cubs are three and six in extra innings. Rangers are two and eight overall. The beer count is at 17. Woo! Since one o'clock this afternoon. O'clock? I am no. at. I am I on my. I, I have had. This is beer number 18 since one o'clock this afternoon. And you still have all your wits above you. My God bless you, brother. <laughs> I couldn't attempt that even if I wanted to. Hey, I attempt many things I don't want to. I just managed to do them. There you go. So it is the top of the 10th. The Cubs are up to bat. Looks like it is going to be... Who is going to be up? Looks like it's going to be cool. Jan Gomes, the catcher. Oh, wait. Nope. Looks like we've got a pinch hitter coming in. It is going to be Cooper. Cooper sat down on strikes. Ian Happ is up. Top of the 10th, one out. Top of the order for the Cubs. Ian Happ. One hell of a baseball player. I do love me some Ian Happ. <sighs> My, uh, oh, Clemson won. God damn it, Ray Ray. Why are you telling me these bad things? Give me good news, not bad news. That's what he does. Ray Ray is the bearer of bad news. Actually, my record, actually, well, Buck, uh, Jared Souza, again, uh, Jared Souza and I, uh, one night attempted to break Boggs. You've heard of Wade Boggs' beer drinking record? Oh, I've heard, yes. And we came close. Uh, Jared Souza and I, in a 24-hour period between the two of us, came within three beers of breaking bogs. Wow. 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 So that would be 70, I believe that's 72 beers divided by two gentlemen. We were at 36 beers a piece and we didn't quite, we we passed out. We just, we, we, we we could, we we could no longer stand. I mean, we started at 11 a.m., and it was about eight or nine a.m. the next day, and we just we we we, we couldn't we, we couldn't even fucking stand up. Promise me you'll never attempt to break the Andre record. No, oh, God man. Almighty, oh, one hundred and six. Oh, oh, oh. No, I wouldn't. I, I attempted Boggs because I had a tag team partner. Oh, okay. I had a tag team partner for Boggs. Andre, I'm gonna need. All three Sousa brothers. <laughs> no, you're going you're gonna to need evolution. You're going to need the four horsemen for that. So yeah, my my my, I'm only at about 17 beers for the night. Uh, my record is about 36, so I'm good. Uh, but yeah, uh, Just be Andre, careful. no. Hap gets walked. Suzuki is up to bat. Runners on first and second. Robertson not pitching too well here. We got runners on first and second. Suzuki's up to bat, but he's down two strikes right off the bat. Slider and knuckle curve. He did get the double, which turned into a, into a run earlier today. But Bellinger on deck. We got one out. Oh, boy. What's going to happen, meow? It came awful close to a balk almost. He turned around at the last second to uh, get the runner on second base. Balks are a weird thing. I've I've been watching baseball for 30 years, and I'm still hazy on what exactly a balk is. Come on. That was outside, and you know it. Bad call. Shortstop, half to second. Master Martin to third. Bellinger up. Two outs. 
Men on second and third. Here's what you pay Bellinger for, Cubbies. They are going to intentionally walk Bellinger. I would, I would do the same thing. I would do the same thing. Haas, are you kidding? You're going to intentionally load the bases with one out? Morell's two for four tonight. You're going to load the bases? Sometimes you got to trust your gut. I wouldn't do that. You but... got to know when to hold them. Know when to fold them. Kenny or Rogers, just, hey, pitcher for the Texas the Rangers. Rangers. Hey, why not? <laughs> Were we just singing his praises just a while ago? <laughs> I, 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 I'm not doubting Bochi. It's just... Uh, damn. Morrell got a hold of that one. Unfortunately, it went foul. Oh, definitely. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> and, uh, whoo, anything get hit, gets hit that far out, I have a damn stewardess on it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, he, he definitely. A little definitely outside on the second oh. pitch. And I missed that he got a triple earlier in the game. I mean, a triple. Yeah, Morell's ball. Uh, so it's one and one to Morell. Swing, grounded foul. So, two strikes on him. Two outs, bases loaded, top of the 10th. Oh, boy. Over the plate, but low. That is going to be ball Ball two. Oh. Mm. Two balls, two strikes, bases loaded. High in the air, right side. He's got it. That'll do it for the top of the 10th. Rangers are coming up. Bottom of the 10th. Daring oh. move by Bochi. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn. Brilliant. I, just, I wish I could have cashed this bet out. Brilliant. But I didn't do it quick enough. That was... That was fucking ballsy. That was whipping your nuts out at the trough of a uh, Salisaw Stadium men's room trough. Just whipping your nuts out and saying, fuck it. <laughs> uh. By the way, uh, the former uh, manager of the Salisaw Black Diamonds, the Elvis impersonator, have you spoken with him recently? How's he doing? Yes, uh, he's an assistant uh, at Fort Gibson. Larry Went to Coleman. Fort Gibson? Yes. Yeah, I saw him at the state. They played in the state tournament last spring, and I uh, got to see him and talk to him for a few minutes. So yeah, he's, is is he doing doing all right? Yeah, yeah, he's doing great. He's doing great. I, I well, I, mean, I know I'm preaching to the choir on this one, but the Salisaw people they treated they they, they treated us so damn well. Yes, yes. Um, Wild Bill and, and and the football games being up in the press box. I just I. <laughs> it, it wasn't the it, it's not the same after Coach Coleman left. Not the same. I mean, Coach Coleman was Coach Coleman was a gem. Yep. He was a rare gem. Uh, I just I. It's so weird, I, and maybe you you have this in your in your brain, Buck. That was two thousand and seven, two thousand eight for me. Right here, I am two thousand twenty four, and I still go back to those days. It does because wow. because because I learned because I watched you. I kept my mouth shut and I just watched, and I was like, okay, how does Buck do this? How does he get interviews? How does he talk to people? 
and now here I am doing this where I am interacting. I owe so much of what I am now to you, and it's it, it it's wonderful. I I. I, I, I can never thank you enough, Buck. You, you you taught me how to do this 20 years before I started doing it. <laughs> and it was an absolute privilege to, to have you uh, come along and, and show you the ropes. And I just we still had Rodriguez. Damn. Oh, my gosh. That salsa. To this, day, to this day, the best Mexican restaurant by far. Shit! My beer man right? fell down. No, I got. I'm. I'm. I'm building my pyramid, stat boy. <laughs> I've got. Uh, oh, oh, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I've got twelve sixteen-ounce Miller lights. There you uh, go. Balanced on my desk right now. Well, last year when we were doing this and was the White Sox playing the Astros, I had a meltdown when the bullpen went to shit because our manager was a fucking nimrod and I just did a whack and I knocked about 10 tall boy beer cans all the way back to my Marshall amplifier. It's like, God damn it, Ronaldo Lopez. Why in God's fucking name are you bringing that stupid son of a bitch in? He's out the third base uh, advancing the runner to Winning run is now 90 feet away. Seager with a sacrifice, sort of. So, yep. Comes down to, comes Young down to and Young. Garcia is on deck. Young is up. Garcia is on deck. We've got the winning, the winning run at third. That's low. Ball one. Second pitch is a strike. One and one count. Ball three, knuckle curve. Swing and a miss. That's strike two. Mm -hmm. Two and two count to two and two count to Young. Smiley, the pitcher for the Cubs, trying to keep this thing alive for the Cubbies. Base hit wins the game. That's all it takes. Back fly or. Wild or oh, yeah, that's Ooh. Just make good enough contact. Three and two. Oh, oh, boy. Yeah, just don't strike out. Just put the ball in play. <clears throat> ball four, they won. Walked him. Bases okay. loaded with Adolis Garcia, Garcia coming up. Do you want to walk Garcia and, and, and make and, and, and have the rookie hit? No. Would you, would you a Garcia swing. A double play is still a possibility here. UConn wins 92 to 52 over San Diego. Well, the Cubs have got to get a double play here. Ball one. I don't like this situation for Chicago. This is, you don't get a double play here. You're, you're kind of exactly. screwed. Exactly. I mean, you are ball two. Oh, they walking in here. You walk and they win. No, not, not necessarily. It's nope. three of three. Runner oh, yeah, there is still a base open. A Ball base three. Yeah, yeah, they're they're gonna they're gonna walk him here. That, he, Holy jumping shit balls! Yeah, they're gonna 
And they're going to bring up Langford with the bases loaded? Are they insane? <laughs> and that is ball four. They have loaded the bases for Langford. Holy flying fuck balls. Now's your chance, rookie. All right. I got him on my fantasy team. Hey, motherfucker, you hit a grand slam. Hey, all good by me. <laughs> all we need is the ball out of the infield. That's it. That's all it's going to take. All we take. need is the ball out of the infield. Infield in all the way. Down and in. Ball one to Langford. Or we can work or walk. A walk wins. A walk wins. The phones are out. The cell phones are out. Everyone's getting their cell phones out. That's right. You got a mound visit. Chicago is calling a mound visit. Looking at my fantasy team, and I'd rather not. <laughs> Five for 29. Pitching staff looked pretty good today, though. All right. Going back to the dugout. Oh, talk about the pressure cooker. Over the plate, and that is going to be a strike. One and one count to the rookie, Wyatt Langford. Any hit? Or any sucker, anything scores anything out the here. Anything out of the infield, just hit, just hit it out of the infield. Second strike, knuckle curve fouled off by Langford. It is a one and two count. Oh boy, can the rookie deliver? That one zero pitch was low though. Ref called, um, called it a strike. Another foul yeah, ball. That was low. do not mess that one up. I got to say, I I love this rookie. I love Wyatt Langford. This kid's, he's a, like I said, he's a bitch with the stick. Swing grounded, sharply fouled. Ugh. Ugh, ball and two strikes. The kid is, oh, he is trying. The kid's fighting. He's fighting. He's battling. This is what baseball is all about. One, two pitch. Swing and fouled. Sinker, 93 miles an hour. Damn, this kid's got a bat. Buck is just eating this up. Buck just loves the fact that he's seeing a Ranger rookie just up there. <laughs> what a situation. What a situation. It's something you Horse dream on of. Simeon. Langford reaches on the fielder's choice. They got the out at home. Two outs. So it is going to be Heim, the catcher, coming up for Texas. Holy moly, 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 moly. Is this opening day or is this the playoffs? This, They're this playing feels like it's the playoffs. The playoff game. This feels like October.
High him up, strike one. Fell it off a sinker, 94 miles an hour. Up the alley, right center field! It is over! There you go. The Rangers win the game. Jonah Heim. The Rangers take the win on opening night, but could not be happier. Got a chance to be 162 and 0 still. Hey, <laughs> mathematically. <laughs> <laughs> Holy moly. I mean, the the rookie set the table and the veteran put it through. Yep. Yep, that was a championship performance right there. The, the Cubs, they just, they got in the 10th and they put themselves in a bad spot. Globe Life Field celebrates. The Rangers are 1-0. They win on opening night. Man. Well, Gentlemen, looks the like the, uh, the Diamondbacks are up over the Rockies, 2-1, to one, bottom of the third. Uh, Boston is at Seattle. They are up to nothing bottom of the third. Checking out the uh, scores here in MLB. Uh, Guardians are up one to nothing on the Athletics, top of the fourth. Red Sox up two to nothing on the Mariners, bottom of the third. Diamondbacks up on the Rockies, three to one, bottom of the third. Those are the three games going on at the moment. Ah, uh, holy moly, Moses! Uh, well, well, if that's, we have, if that's what this season is going to be like, based off of tonight, we're in for a while. It's been a ride. fun opening day, minus my Cubs or my White Sox losing one to nothing in a nine inning game. Uh, it's going to be a long. I I I burrowed in. I'm like a tick. I know this is going to be a long, frustrating. God damnable, awful season. White Sox are going to be dog shit. I know it. I just, I have to trust the process, trust the process, just live with, <sighs> live with horrible. <laughs> but hey, Bucks Rangers start out defending their championship with a. 4-3 victory over the Chicago Cubs. Uh, we've got about two minutes left in our broadcast. Thank you to everyone who has continued to join us uh, for this. I may stay on a little bit longer. I'm not sure how long our other buddies may be here. Uh, no, we still have a I'm, few other... I'm done. I've done yep, my, I'm, I'm I'm about to, four I'm about hours. To, I'm good. All right. About to log right. off here myself. Well, uh, thank you to each and every one of our guests uh, Tom Grassi, Urinating Tree, Stat Boy, Buck Ringel, Jimmy Bebe. Thank you all so much for joining us. Uh, it has been a wonderful night. Uh, cannot thank you enough for giving up your time and attention for this. Uh, Buck, um, I'm going to be messaging you. We are looking for someone to take that spot for Sunday Night Baseball. Uh, we're doing Sunday Night Baseball every single week this year. Um, depending on your schedule, if you want to join us to give us your insight, you know, I, if we get a chance to watch Sunday Night Baseball with Buck Ringgold even a dozen times this year, um, let's let's try and make it happen if we possibly can. Uh, we're, we're starting this Sunday with Cardinals and Dodgers, 6 p.m., um, uh, Again, I'll, I'll, I'll get with you, communicate on your schedule, uh, see if we can make that happen. Stat Boy Mike, obviously, if you want to join us, we're doing Sunday Night Baseball every single Sunday night this uh, season. I uh, will see what I can do. I will definitely, uh, you know, since since I'm down one job and I have another, hey, 
I, I've already gotten WrestleMania off for this weekend or for next weekend coming up. So, oh, I'm Mania, we, we, we're we're going full full ass on Mania this coming weekend. Uh, we definitely want you with us. Well, uh, I, I think I've already obligated with uh, the multiverse on that one. Oh, as, as far as baseball goes, hey, there's a possibility. Never say never. Hey, anyway, Sunday, me- Sunday, Sunday Night Baseball, we're going to be here every single Sunday until football season starts. I got you. I got you. So I'll say my good nights. Follow me on Twitter at lbstatkid1977. Follow me on Instagram at statboy13. Drop me a line. Use the hashtag statboyapproved. Check out Statboy Sports Bar every Tuesday normally at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Central. But this week, we are on at 6. Uh, we will be doing some uh, WrestleMania predictions and uh, at 8 o'clock Eastern. We have our WrestleMania prediction show on Tuesday night if you want to join us. I think we're already booked. <laughs> oh. like said, you've got me for the – you've probably got me for the sports, but the Jeff Meacham Multiverse of Media has got me for the wrestling. So – that one I cannot break. I'm sorry. I have to stay true to that one. But when it comes to baseball, a man, a man I, has oh, obligations. Never say never. Never say never. I had a great time. I love you Thank all. Thank you so much for joining us, Step Boy. Step Boy out. Good night, everybody. Right. Take care, Buck. Thank you again for joining us tonight. It, you, you know, the pleasures on this side of the table. Anytime I get to watch and call baseball with you, it's. It's it's like I'm a, it's like I'm a kid at a carnival. It's like I, I'm getting to watch and talk baseball with Buck Ringo. It's like I can't. <laughs> there, 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 there's there's nothing better. Uh, we we are uh, legitimately uh, every Sunday night this season doing Sunday night baseball. Going to be doing you know covering the game, doing a weekly wrap up of what's going on in the league. Uh, if you want to join us. Uh, Please let me know. We had a guy who did it with us last year. We unfortunately had to let him go. Um, but uh, if you would like to take that spot and hang out with us on Sunday nights, uh, 6 to 9 p.m., just watching Sunday night baseball, talking what's going on in the league, uh, it, it would be an absolute pleasure it, to, do, to do Sunday night baseball with Buck Ringgold. <laughs> It'll be me, Maddie, and Dev once he gets his internet back up. Uh, if you can do that with us, Buck, it, it would be... I, I, I can't tell you how awesome that would be. <laughs> yeah, uh, Sunday Night Baseball with Buck Ringgold, I'm in. And, I, and I'll tell you if I'm available uh, on a Sunday night or not. But, uh, yeah, yeah, count me in whenever well, I'm available. Yeah. I'll, right, I'll well, we're starting this Sunday, Dodgers-Cardinals, uh, 6 p.m., I'm not sure what your schedule looks like this weekend. Uh, are you available this Sunday night, or do you have? It might be one of those. I might have to do some yard work, uh, kind of. Okay. Sunday, so uh, hey, probably in, in, any Sunday night you're available. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll hit just just, yeah. just figure every yeah. Sunday night. I'll send you the link if you can join us. Great. If not, but you, you have an open invitation Sunday night baseball with the Raw Ball podcast. Uh, just to discuss the the goings on of Major League Baseball, it, it's always <laughs> it's baseball with Buck. I, indeed, indeed. I, I'm, I'm I'm a kid in a candy store. Just give it to me. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely, I'll keep you posted. All right, you take care, Buck. Thank you so much for joining us. Indeed, indeed. Right. Hey, this was fun. All right, you take care, sir. You bet. We'll see you later. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, that will spell the end of this uh, particular broadcast for the Raw Ball podcast. Uh, Thank you one and all for joining us. Each and every one of you, it looks like we still have 30 people watching. I wish I could stay here and continue to call baseball with you. But unfortunately... I do have to work tomorrow. Let's take a look at the present scores. Guardians up four to nothing on the Athletics, top of the fourth. The Red Sox are up two to nothing on the Mariners. Diamondbacks up eight to one on the Rockies. Holy shit. 
Holy Moses Malone. Diamondbacks are laying a whipping on the Rockies. Oh, oh Murgatroyd. How many beers do I have left? I've got half of this one and one of the other. You know what? I may just stay here for a while. Um, you know what? I may just stay around for a while because Cap is a glutton for punishment. And I love baseball. And let's just uh, see what we can do. Um... It's 10.05 Central Time. Uh, we are still doing the hashtag stream against suicide for the 988lifeline.org. Um, for the 30 people that are currently watching us, thank you so much. It, it, it means more to us than you can ever imagine. We believe and love in this charity because it's a charity that is near and dear to our hearts. So thank each and every one of you for joining us. Um, uh, let's see what's going on here. We got, uh, oh my goddamn White Sox are such shit. Uh, Guardians are up six to nothing on the Athletics. Red Sox are up two to nothing. Let's pull up just because I have MLB. Uh. MLB, what have you. Uh, what is the... Boston's up three to nothing on Seattle. Good God. Uh, yeah, this game is not looking too good for them. Well, let's, uh, let's pull up this game and... Uh, where is the home team audio... Uh, my old hometown, Seattle, K-I-R-O. Well, Cap's going to hang out as long as the beer holds out. I have half of this beer and this one beer left. So I am basically going to hang out here until the beer runs out because I love this cause. I love MLB. I love baseball. It's opening day. So I'm going to try and stay on the air as long as I can to raise as much money as I can for this wonderful cause. Oh. It is 3-0 Mariners over the Red Sox. Cleveland is up 6-0 over Oakland. The Diamondbacks are up 9-1 on the Rockies. So right now, Boston and Seattle are the only game in town that is even remotely competitive, unfortunately. <sighs> You're actually catching the captain in kind of an, an odd situation. Uh, it is me by myself. Uh, I have nobody but myself and my pyramid of cans here. But... I care about this cause, and I'm going to keep going until my beer runs out, which I'm guessing is going to be about an hour or so. <sighs> Where are cigarettes? Ah, there are cigarettes. Uh, nothing like cigarettes, folks. We are currently on commercial in the Seattle Mariners and the Boston Red Sox. Pretty amazing. Diamondbacks are now up 10 to 1 on the Rockies. Mariners 
are the only game that's competitive right now. It's the bottom of the fourth. Mariners coming up to bat. It is strike one to Polanco. Oh, it's become a one-man show at this point. It's just the captain. What is going on with March Madness? I know Ray Ray has been uh, letting us know what's been going on. Looks like Clemson won over Arizona. Fuck me running. UConn is still alive. Uh, Iowa State is down 36 to 26 to Illinois at halftime. Alabama and Carolina. I can actually put this on my television here. Let's check what the Caps bracket is looking like. Uh, probably looks atrocious. Oh, good lordy, good God. Yeah, Caps bracket is pretty well fucked for the most part. Ugh. NCAA men's scores. Oh, let's pull up the old TV here. Let's get CBS. Alabama, North Carolina. Could be a good game either way. Fuck it, it's 20 bucks. It's the beer league. Thank you, Ray Ray. For the update there, NC55, them a 50. Ugh. Ah, oh, come on, damn it. If I get my TV to actually cooperate with me. CBS. Oh, Red Sox and the Mariners. Red Sox up 3 nothing. bottom of the fourth. Looks like it is Carolina 55, Bema 52. Illinois up on Iowa State. Jesus Christ. Ay, ay, ay. Cap's bracket is falling to shit, and it's coming quick. Ray Ray, I wish you could deliver good news. We love you, Ray Ray, but you always deliver bad news. It's like, oh my God, this team's losing. That team's... Deliver us some good news, Ray Ray. That's what we need. We need some good news, Ray Ray, Ray. Ba -ba -da -da. Good news, Ray Ray. Ba -da -da -da. You know, something like that. Give us some good news. 988lifeline.org slash donate. Please donate directly to the cause. Send picture confirmation of donations so we can accurately total donations. We are looking for $5,000 tonight. That is what we are looking for. It is the cap singularly at this point. Uh, our guests have had to jump to other uh, obligations. Maddie is dealing with an internet outage. So it is the cap at this point. You are looking and dealing with the cap. North Carolina up 57 to 54, 14 45 remaining in the second half. Hi! Thank you. Ray Ray, thank you. I I I do appreciate it. I, I know you're trying. I know you're trying to give me good news. The, the good news isn't always ours. Unfortunately. <sighs> oh boy, oh boy.
yay, yay. Cap has about yay much left in this beer and this full beer. So I will be here until I run out of beer because O'Neill Goodbye Home Run Mariners are on the board Diamondbacks are up 14 to 1 over the Rockies Mariners Put it two to three Red Sox. Holy Moses Malone. Holy schmoligans. The Diamondbacks are making absolute donkey shit out of the Rockies. Oh boy, House Caps fantasy team looking. I am third of 11 on opening night. Not too... Great, not too bad. One point game, yes. 59-57 Alabama. Thank you, Ray Ray, for the constant updates. Thank you for sticking with us, Ray Ray. And that is a basket for North Carolina. It is a tie game, 59-59. Cap will be here until he runs out of beer or energy because I believe in this cause. Thank you all so much for joining us. Internet outages and obligations have prevented others from remaining with the cap, but I am still here. Because that is what the cap does. He does not abandon his ship. And if this beer amid, woo, 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 I wish you guys could see this. I have got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten, sixteen tall boys stacked on my desk. I don't know if I should be proud or if I should be ashamed. Pride and shame. Pride goeth before the fall. Shame goeth. Before the drawl. Ay, ay, ay. This is my last beer. Once I'm out of beer, hi. Once I'm out of beer, I will be signing off because literally without beer, the captain cannot continue. <sighs> but I will be here until this beer runs out. 59-59. And we've got a foul. Looks like it is going to be on North Carolina. Bama going to the free throw line. We've got a timeout. Oh, Lord of mercy. Lord of mercy. I hope Iowa State gets their act together. 15 to 1. I am sending this to Matthew as we speak. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
way. Ay, ay, ay. You got to wonder at this point with the Diamondbacks being up 15 to 1 in the bottom of the third of the Rockies. You got to wonder how much longer they're going to keep Zach Gallon in this game. I mean, come on. I mean, likely he's. I wouldn't even anticipate him coming out for the fourth inning. Um, and who could blame the Diamondbacks? You know, they've got to preserve their ace. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the cap is still here. Thank you, Ray Ray, for still being here. We have 30 people watching the captain doing whatever the captain is doing. Um, it's the stream against suicide. All I can say is, ladies and gentlemen, if you're watching us, if you are enjoying or not enjoying or whatever, please go to 988, uh, donate to the Stream Against Suicide, the National Suicide Prevention Hotline. Uh, Cap is going to be here uh, all night. At least until my beer runs out. This is my last beer. So I'm figuring I've got about 30 to 40 minutes. Wish I had longer, but got to work tomorrow. And, you know, <clears throat> things are what they are. Looks as if Alabama are heading to the line. Nope. Alabama passes. They still have possession. Alabama with a basket. 61-59. Honestly, at this point, if I had my druthers, I would take Alabama here just to infuriate my brother Justin. Because he's a Carolina homer. North Carolina with a three in. Not going in. Alabama for a three. Incomplete. Hi, moya, moya, moy. Diamondbacks up 16 to 1, bottom of the third over the Rockies. Guardians up 6 0 over the Athletics. Red Sox still up 3 2, top of the fifth. Angels score. Uh, the Angels lost eleven to three. Ray Ray. Uh, Angels took a drubbing. Unfortunately. It is tied sixty-one sixty-one between North Carolina and 
Alabama. Finally, the Rockies reach the top of the fourth. It is 16 to 1. Holy mother of God, the Rockies are awful. Sixty-one, sixty-one between Bama and North Carolina, and we've got a foul. Story gets walked. Red Sox have the bases loaded. <sighs> Red Sox could definitely make a big headway here. Three runs on six hits. They have the bases loaded and only one out. It is the top of the fifth. On the road against the Mariners. Gallon has come out for the top of the fourth. Holy smokes. I'm actually pretty amazed with this kind of a lead. The fact that they're even giving this uh, 16 to 1. Jesus Christ. Holy moly, Moses. Steal the pitcher for the Mariners. Six hits, five strikeouts, two walks. Not too bad of a line. Granville right side. Red Sox will get a run on that force out. It is four to two Red Sox over the Mariners top of the fifth. There goes the quality start for Castillo. Four six fielders choice. Luis Castillo, one of those pitchers in baseball that you just you just wish Luis Castillo was with a better team. North Carolina up sixty six to sixty two, sixty eight to sixty two, Bama driving. And that is a basket, 68 to 64, eight minutes and 30 seconds left. Time uh, clock continues to tick. Oh, Bama is giving Carolina a five here. This is, oh, Carolina goes up 70, 64. 
This is the most. In oh, three pointer from Bama. 70 to 67. It is still Tar Heel lead. Eight minutes and 10 seconds left. There is more going on over my left shoulder than there is in front of my right eye. Cap is going to uh, relieve some ballast, and I will be back in just a moment, hopefully to cover the end of Alabama and North Carolina. Uh, you know, the bladder only has uh, so much space. But, hey, we still have 31 people watching us. Thank you, one and all. Thank you so much. Uh, you have no idea how much it means. Uh, I will be right back in about 30 to 45 seconds and hopefully finish off this North Carolina, Alabama game. Uh, cannot thank you enough for joining us. I will be right back. The captain is back. Holy Moses Malone. Ah. Oh. Looks like it is 70 to 67. Carolina over Bama. Bama driving down the court. Thank you to all 30 of you still watching. Bama, whoa, almost sunk the basket. Bama's trying here. North Carolina's putting up a fight. This is one hell of a basketball game. 